This is Lance and Moore, the voice of the fans. And this is the window review. We take a look back at a strange window for the boys in green. Plus, we get ahead, or we take a look ahead of this Friday's draw for the Nations League playoff. And we hear from the Roar Faithful. That is you. This is Lance and Moore. We're live. And we're very, very tired. David Dunn here, joined by Martin Prendergast and Conor McAvoy. And you're most welcome to another edition of Lance and More Live. This is the window review. We're a little jaded, we're a little tired, we're a little heartbroken, but we have joy in our hearts, we hope. Anyway, uh, as per usual, if uh, you're joining us for the first time, you're most welcome. I would ask, if it is your first time, please like the channel, please like the video, please subscribe to the page. It's got Neil QR code. Head over to our Facebook, Instagram, and a Twitter account. Please follow us on YouTube. And also, Connor, that's Rep Tracker. Uh, if you want to find out more about uh, the boys in green of now and the future, that is the place to go. Um, he's got all the information that he's doing. God's work. And if you want opinion, head over to lansonroar.ie. Lansonroar.ie, right. And, of course, if you want to get involved, have your say. Leave a comment. Get involved. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk whatever you want to talk about. You can ask us whatever you want to ask us. Chaps, uh, most welcome to um, another review show, another window done, uh, finished now for the rest of the year. Uh, Martin, um, I haven't heard much from you over the last couple of days. It's been a... <laughs> were you a little busy, Martin, were you? She's just a bit busy, Dave, yeah. Uh, fantastic weekend, apart from the football. You know, a lot of people I met last night and over the weekend were saying... It's just a distraction, isn't it, football? Because you're having such a good crack at all the events we were at. And, um, you know, then obviously the result didn't go our way at all. But um, absolutely brilliant weekend. Yeah, very jaded. So, bit of a sore throat coming in now. Um, yeah, but absolutely brilliant, wasn't it? Like, we met so many people in the cloud of ring um, over the, oh. the two days. And obviously the Irish Centre kicked it off brilliantly in style on the Friday night. Well, here's the um, Friday night one. Uh, here we are, Martin, on stage with Alan Kelly, Clinton Morrison, and Ian Hart. Uh, that was fantastic, wasn't it? Over in the London Irish Centre at Lansdowne Legends. Absolutely brilliant, yeah. I mean, look, people say do not meet your heroes, but I, I think that's just nonsense. It was, you know, as someone who went to the World Cup in 2002, lucky enough to go over there, just to have a chat with them about everything and uh, reminisce and all that. It was brilliant. The lads are absolutely top class. And, yeah, we're looking forward to releasing that, Dave, aren't we? Because we have got the audio. We do. We have the evidence. Um, yeah. Um, and what's that, what's that, Connor? Sorry. What? No, I was just going to do a drum roll. Instead of us doing a live time, we'll just play the audio. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, there I is mean, some belting stories in it, though, isn't there? That's the thing. They are uh, cracking. Uh, cracking stories. I mean, I never knew about the one in Iran, um, which is what I can't wait to share. Uh, in fact, uh, Clinton Morrison and Ian Hart didn't even know about the one in Iran. Um, I tell you what. what I didn't know any of the stories. They're no, all brand you, new to me. Uh, you're only a right. young buck, aren't you? No, he was only born, wasn't he? He wasn't even uh, born when, it, when that was going on. I was born, what, two months before the World Cup started? Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Um, old. I know, I feel ancient <laughs> around this fella. Uh, he could, I, I am old enough to be his dad, really. Well, you're old enough to be my dad, Martin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like, it's, yeah, it's just fantastic stories, of course. And we do get into Saipan. And uh, I was listening back to the audio and I sound, you know, I'm asking the question about Saipan and I sound like I'm stuttering, like, um, because you can't see it, but you could see Martin, couldn't you? The, the, the awkward looks on the faces when, you know, they knew what was coming. Yeah. And I was it like, was brilliant. And they handled it yeah. really well. And uh, like, you know, it was a Q and A, it was a, like, we had a whole script, didn't we? And we were kind of have a bit of a semblance of order, Dave, that we were, how we were going to run the show. And it was absolutely brilliant. But, um, when it got to Saipan, we, I remember like we were sitting on next to each other on the couch and I just kind of tapped your leg because we hadn't said a word to them for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. They were just interacting and bounced off each other. And Clinton Morrison was absolutely brilliant. Like he, he just gave the honest truth of his kind of recollections of it and even how he interacts with Roy now. So it will be a brilliant listen. We will obviously release it soon. Um, yep. And yeah, it was it was brilliant fun to do. You know, we 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 obviously trying to change the pod and do do things, and you know, doing a live show in London was a massive thing for us. And thanks to everyone who supported it, and also the Cladder Ring. Then just onto that, we had two amazing days there. We had Kitcon coming in. Just big shout out to Paul 
Ian who arranged that. That was absolutely brilliant. But like we were surprised Saturday night. Um, with, there we are with uh, Ian Hart and Andy Reid. Uh, Andy Reid came along on, on Saturday and Sunday. Um, yeah, was Ian Hart there on day two. With like I even stayed at the London Irish Centre with Ian. We watched the boxing Kate Taylor's fight, so we had a late one. But fair play, we got up the next day. Had a, another all day then on um, Saturday at the Cladder Ring. But um, you know, even the FOI president David Carell there is in the photo of us as well. Uh, Jerry McEnany also come in. Uh, sorry, Paul Cook. Jeez, blooper alert. <laughs> wow. The wrong president. wow. <laughs> they won't be coming in again. Sorry, sorry, Paul. <laughs> we do Terrible. Have the listen, don't Terrible. We, are you that still pissed, my Aaron, are you? I think I am. There you go. That's the tiredness. There you go. At least you know it's live. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, you do know it's live. And of course, uh, you know, probably some of you guys don't realise. You, you might be a bit tuckered out as well. Probably a bit football there from from the window. But you know, we got to do. We got to talk about it, and we we got to see where we got to go. So I see the comments coming in, guys. Keep them coming in. We are live. Get involved. Have your say. Um, and then of course on to the Sunday. Um, we had uh, just to show you a picture here, Martin. This is uh, at the game actually. Here you are, Martin. Oh, <laughs> with yeah. Andy Reid. Oh, hold on. Let me take that. Uh, there. There you go. With Aaron, my daughter. Yeah. I mean, look, one thing I'd say as well, like with, with London, we had, obviously I'm chairman of the club as well, very proud to be. And um, yeah, absolutely brilliant um, that, you know, we had so many, like the tickets. I, I did say this to the FBI when I, when I was chatting to David Carell in the cladder that, you know, we could have sold out our allocation. We could have sold seven and a half without a doubt. I, th- I do think there is a bit of criticism or some learnings from that um, for future because, how they marketed and, and promoted the game, you know, to the Irish London community, um, definitely wasn't brilliant. Like we tried our best with Risk London. We got all the tickets we wanted for as a club, which is 360, which is brilliant for us. But there was an opportunity for a lot of young people as well, kids and stuff like a lot of our, my friends all signed up to be members of the club and, and bought their, it was an opportunity for them to bring their kids to the games, which is a very big thing. Uh, for kind of you know keeping you know yeah. your links to Ireland alive, and that was what it was really nice to have. But they could have definitely sold more tickets without a doubt. Yeah, I, I must say, like David Crowell seems like a good guy. Uh, we've met him a few times now. Very personal, but like very personable, isn't he? He'll go out, he'll meet the fans, he'll chat to people. Um, obviously, it was at the, by the time he arrived at the Cladder, it was it was in full swing, wasn't it? I always remember that Tommy Tiernan joke. You know, like when you having the you have was it the Kaylee or you are having the the session. And, you know, we were lifting off into space. I think we're well in the orbit at that stage. So I don't think anyone knows who he was. But, um, you know, like we, we, we did say to him, you know, well, with this pod, we're very uh, we're very down the line. We try to be down the line. We're honest. You know, we're going to call things as we see it. We're going to we, we give a voice to the fans. That's what it's about. It, it's it's a you know, it's a way for the fans to vent and the fans to let the FBI know exactly um, what, what to think as well. And we'll be fair. We'll be balanced. You know, we, and it's bad. We, we're going to call it out. You know, and, you know, he seems like a good guy. A few things need improving, you know, but hopefully we'll, we'll give him time, Martin, won't we? We'll, we'll hopefully. Oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, look, look, this is a change in time. I mean, that, we'll, we'll come on to chat about the football, but, you know, uh, you know, you have to you have to kind of trust people to do the job. And, um, yeah. Brilliant, actually. You know, like thinking about Andy Reid yesterday was very, very good on stage for a Q&A, just like done 10, 15 minute chat with me on stage. Um, and he was saying, though, you know, the, the elections are on in Ireland next week or anything. But he was saying, you know, do look to see the lads who are candidates and what they're going to do about sport, because the government have to invest in football. They have yeah. to invest in the League of Ireland. And that's the thing, because Brexit is going to really challenge the development of our players. They can't go over early now to England. So we have to develop them in Ireland, which I believe we have got that structure in place, you know, with, with you know, good coaches and things. But, um, you know, that that's what we need to do now. We need to yeah. make sure there's money coming into it. And, and that's what it's all about. And, uh, of course, Connor, sorry, because uh, we just haven't heard from Martin for a weekend. I must, I must admit, Connor, Martin was absolutely flat out. He's like our own little Tasmanian devil, isn't he? <laughs> no, he wasn't. He's was pretty average, if you ask me. You could have done a better job yourself, Dave. No, well, he's well, no, I mean, that, that's a given, of course. But, you know, yeah, but it, was, it was a great weekend. Great weekend. And of yeah, course, I uh, must give a shout out to the Cladder Ring as well, Dave. Just like brilliant venue. Put on coaches Timber. for five coaches up to Wembley. No hassle. Um, and yeah, and it's brilliant again just to see so many lads who listen to the pod uh, saying hello to us, telling us they listened. Hope they're all subscribers. If they're not, um, <laughs> make sure you do be. subscribe. <laughs> But it was good. Uh, who was the lad? It was a really good lad, uh, Dave. Was it Dave? 
Karen. I think he said he's one of the top five percent listeners. Yeah, the, and the lads from really down, good they lad. were good. They were good crack. Great crack. Group yeah. of lads from down, they were good crack. We, yeah, I know we had a bit of banter there. You know, it's just lovely. We said, every, you know, come up, say hello, and they did, which yeah. which was really, it was really lovely, and it was really lovely to hear uh, people come up and say, you know, I had people come up and say to me, I oh, yeah, Dave, you know, I agree with you most of the time, and I know Connor. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was. You had too many Guinness zeros. You had too many Guinness zeros. Oh, geez, no I welcome to that. Yeah, no one thinks that. Thing. Thanks. Don't be lying, bastards. Yeah. <laughs> um, I need this, lads, please. Uh, yeah. No, no, but it was great. Like, and you know, there's people going up and talking to you, Martin, and you know, I was just, yeah. I, it, it, it was just brilliant. It was, it was like I know it was in London, and it was so it was for us a home game for us, at, us our club and things. But yeah. you know, just seeing so many people that you normally see in a bar in. Well, the last time I seen him was in Helsinki. So, you know, it's just absolutely brilliant. And the music was crazy. Like, you know, and the, the pub, I said, was just absolutely heaving, hopping all day. But it was comfortable and the staff done a fantastic job. I mean, they were flying food out the whole time till about 10 yeah. in the evening. So people were coming in. It just catered for everybody. Operation. And if you wanted a quiet, quiet corner, it was there. And Jesus, the five pound Guinness. It was... uh, I, tell, I tell you what, it's an operation film. Uh, and yeah, I just want to I just want to second that. Thank you very much to Clatter Ring. And Finbar, brilliant, massive friends of the pod, and the London and Bobby, the London Irish Centre, f- absolutely brilliant, yeah. brilliant setup. Like, honest to God, it was a fantastic setup. Um, and just actually before we we move it on a little bit, just want to play my little video. Here we go. So that's the London Irish Centre, guys. Head over to LondonIrishCentre.org on their website. They do fantastic work. You can donate whatever you can. And that's the Clatter Ring. If you're in London, you want a little bit of Ireland, Clatter Ring. It's in the Church Road, just off Henna Central. And of course, if you want to support the page. Buy us a coffee over Lansing Road. And thank you to those that do it. Genuinely means a hell of a lot. Um, and of course, kind of not to be outdone. And I mean, we were in the, probably the best. There we are there. Probably the best. I'm happy Dave looks. I was. <laughs> I was very happy. It was a very special one. Um, to, <laughs> it had his, like, lo- had his local ground. That's why his, his own <laughs> national stadium. <laughs> Well, you know, well, well, we missed out Windsor Park, didn't we? For you, Connor. Sorry about that uh, tonight. Some more <laughs> on that later on. No, um, no. I tell you what, though, best media section ever, though. Right? I mean, I love Lansing Road, but holy shit, it was incredible. You've been there as well, Martin. Yeah, I was there oh. for lockdown game. Yeah, that was that. I mean, that was a surreal experience, of course. Like with it empty, just myself and Gary Spain. I think we're at that one. Um, but um, absolutely, yeah, it is the media section is incredible, isn't it? Just yeah. and I mean, look, Wembley as a stadium is a lot of people's first time as well at Wembley. It it was very well organised uh, transport in there. Things seemed to be where we were anyway, and you know it was it was decent, wasn't it? It was good, good crack pop. It's an awful yeah. stadium with the press box, class. Yeah, <laughs> he just hates everything. No, no, but no, no, serious, no, no. From being Except matches it, at Wembley before, it is yeah. it's such mm. a bad stadium. It's not it's not a great atmosphere, but like the staff, are, like everything's first class. Like, oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and suppose that's where we're going. Library. It was a library day, wasn't it? it? Was a bit, wasn't it? I mean, let let's start from the beginning. Um, Worst atmosphere kind of, I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. What was it like? Uh, apparently, at home they sweetened the sound. Uh, you couldn't actually hear them booing the anthem, which was uh, sort that of was, funny. Yeah. In fact. yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, no, that you could you could hear that. On the on the audio of the TV, I watched. You hear it? I didn't watch the whole game back. Like I flicked through it to the key points and yeah, don't blame. Um, but um, yeah, no, I listened to the anthem because a lot of people were kind of obviously it's poppy season, isn't it? And um, a lot of people were saying that was quite uh, insensitive of the <laughs> yeah, of it was... have the military bringing out the <laughs> well <laughs> so that got a few renditions going over its shoulders. <laughs> I thought it was it was quite funny, but. There was no bother that I saw it anywhere anyway. Um, but then we did come around the back kind of way. So um, I didn't see any kind of stuff with, between England and Ireland fans. But I'm, I'm sure it did happen somewhere. Well, well actually, um, some footage uh, was sent over today, in fact, uh, by a fan. Uh, some violence outside of Wembley here. Um, just oh, right. viewer discretion. Yeah, just, just viewer discretion's of eyes, guys. Just going to play this here now. So this is uh, from TikTok.
absolute carnage outside of Wembley. The violence. Um, Martin, he's, um, he's, got, he's got a wrist London scar. He's, got one of your he's not a scar. member of our club. He's not a member of our club, I'm telling <laughs> you. Jesus. Mate. Well, see, we were selling them. In the th- I was a bit conscious of this, selling them in the in the in the cladder ring but like look the great support as well by them but um they uh yeah i didn't see him. yeah it's quite funny <laughs> <laughs> the little kids going up to him i, I hope oh. he's all right i hope he's i hope he wasn't hurt from that anyway but <laughs> yeah no he was pretty it was pretty savage as well if you know who that is by the way give us a shout um we we, we did credit to tiktok i think that's funny that that's he had to have been in the cladder that the day before the oh, yeah, match. Did, just yeah. we couldn't see his face so we don't know who it was yeah, yeah, probably probably the best as well. But uh, that's just I just love that the kids coming over. He's like kind of pushes one away, and the police get involved. You know, <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. Someone oh, definitely was watching this for you. Who is getting the slap and why is Dave showing this on stream? Oh, oh is... Jesus! Ah, well, this is what we do. We are the voice of the fans. Um, nah, listen. I mean, yeah, it, I I thought it was a strange one. Um, when they had the media, when he had the um the army stuff, I. I said this to my sister today, earlier on, and my sister's English, right? And that's, you know, that's not her fault. <laughs> but I do think there is a bit of a blind spot when it comes to, I, I don't know how to politicise it, but I do think it's a bit of a blind spot. You know, like England's quite, um, and Britain is quite sensitive to other countries and cultures and all that. It, it is, it tries to be. But when it comes to Ireland, I don't know, it just feels like a bit of a blind spot, Martin. Like, you know, I know it's poppy season in November, but you, you kind of think, like, maybe not the best thing to do, have armed forces. You know, I'm you know, I come from a military family myself, but probably not the best idea when you're playing Ireland and Wembley. Do you know? Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Yeah, because I don't think it was good. And and just even back thinking to the uh, the policing, like we we walked up that. That's why I knew it was the Irish section there. That little footage you showed, because that's where we kind of had our buses and we went off. Yeah. So it would have been the Claddagh bus that lad would have been on. But we went up there, and you know, the, you know, like the police horses outside the stadium, and someone really politely just went, "Can I pet your?" Can I pet? Can I pet the horse? Kind of thing, and he went, "Yeah, yeah, you can, but if you touch me, I'll bust you or something like." He just said something like, oh, "The police officer on the horse." He just said something like, "I'll, I'll break you or something like that." And everyone just really? went, you hear what he said. I'm telling you, and it was we. Someone said it to me. Jeez, you hear what he just wow. said? And I went, "Yeah, yeah." They were just that can be a thing, you know. That, that definitely, you know, like back tonight, thinking about to ninety one. Um, that was horrible. I mean, that's the worst second. One of the atmosphere, yeah, I've ever been to a, a game, I think. Um, absolutely horrible that night. Um, and I was only a young lad then. But, um, yeah, that, that was the thing. But the police would, around that era as well, they would have been very, you know, I, I think basically. So it's different. But now I was thinking, God, yeah, like, it was a real unnecessary. Yeah, you know, just for the record, like, I'm, I'm no means anti English without, I've lived here for 14 years. I've never had an issue over being Irish, like, genuinely haven't. I've worked with the police, I've worked with, it's actually a lot of Irish in the police. You know, there's a lot of, mm. um, um, there's a lot of police with Irish names that maybe second, third, fourth generation Irish. It, it's, it's a weird one, that, but there you go. Yeah, I, I mean, they were obviously hyped up for it. You know, they're, they're probably, as I said, it's just a, it's a weird thing. It's like a blind spot. Did you see, um, I don't know if you saw this, right? We saw this kind of when they were playing the anthem. So obviously anyone that knows uh, when the boys in green sing around the V, they have to, to look at the tricolor. Yeah. And sometimes um, they do it in a way where if there isn't one kind of handily available, they'll send someone into the stands. First time I ever saw this was Athens last year and they'll hold the flag up. Mm. And here it is. And do you remember this, Connor? Uh, your one fr- lovely lady, but she thought it was a fan. Or she thought like it was a reporter going rogue and ran down. I was like, you can't be doing that. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm with the FAI. It's fine. All I have yeah. to say is, is he holding the flag the wrong way around? No, 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 no. no, no. He's facing the crowd. They'll be facing no, it. No, no. They, they're going to say that. Yeah. You're the second bloody person to say that. Come on, Connor. You know, someone said to me, they get, I don't know if this is true. Some, someone, one of the, uh, the Royal Faithful can tell us this. Do, do we get fined when I'm turning and, and facing the, the flag. No, no. no Someone way. said that last night that we we do, we can get fined for that because you're supposed. There's a particular protocol for the anthems. I don't. Think when we turn. Yeah, I, I must be. In a, I must be in agreement because I think if there isn't one available, like there would. Let's be honest. Not no disrespect to the FBI, but we know the financial situation. They wouldn't be doing it every time to get fined. Um, you know, they they change it, and we've done it. For, we've always done it. Like we've always done it all the way back to. Probably since we we became a football team, like the Republic of Ireland football team, so I I can't imagine that. But um, I mean, I thought it was 
I was looking at the, the highlights of the game a little bit on YouTube, and I noticed it's quite interesting that they didn't show, it's only like a, a five-minute highlight package, they didn't show the Ferguson foul that wasn't given, the penalty shout. Shock. What did he say on ITV, Martin? I haven't seen it on ITV because I, cu- I couldn't watch it. I watched it back today, um, the, like the key points of it. It's yeah. 100% a penalty. Someone said to me last night, someone said to me last night, if that was Harry Kane, it's 100% given. Like, yeah, it's the difference. And, you know, even the, like, it was, it was, yeah, like they said it could have been. Um, like, and he, and he done really well. They were saying how well Ferguson done to get across. Now, it was Roy Keane and um, Ian Wright on it. Um, but they, they, they were pretty fair on it. Yeah, like they did say he's done really well there, but he probably would have got shot off if he hadn't have, you know, been fouled basically. So yeah, um, he has got him. Um, and yeah, the, but what the, the kind of people was there wasn't enough made of it. The lads didn't go in. But it, I think it shows the naivety of our lads. In a Someone made a comment. I just, didn't. No one went in. Y- you disagree, Connor? Why is that? Yeah, because I don't think anyone in the ground thought it was a penalty until we watched the highlights. Or like they the highlights. The the yeah, but the they players the wouldn't screen. have seen it. Yeah, but I don't think the players would have yeah, seen yeah. it on the screen. They wouldn't have been looking up. They would have been playing on next play because mm-hmm. there wasn't really a stoppage. We didn't really notice it ourselves until we looked back at the highlights. So the only person that could really appeal at the time was Ferguson. Because if you remember, he was the only one that was that far up. The rest of the team was basically, what, back in the halfway line. But so I do, do you... think it's harsh to blame the players. No, but I, but you have to blame Ferguson there. Because, he, cause, like, I mean, he's going to know... He's been pulled. He's been pulled down. And I don't think you can blame anyone. I think it's just an awful referee decision. I think but, it's just one of the worst referee decisions. Decisions. He was the awful year. ref. He was absolutely. He, he was. He was shocking. Like, don't get me wrong. We felt we were battered in the second half. But he was. I you know it was a penalty. It was a sending off because it was a second yellow card. You know, you can't really argue with that. Um, but you know, he was absolutely dreadful. But no, I think someone mentioned it on the on the live last night, and I thought it was a good. You know, he's, you know, he's a little bit thing about it with Ferguson. He said, you know, is he mute or something? Like, what? Well, he should be in the referee's face. I think that's mm. naivety. I think it should be going there. Because, look, I know we didn't know it because it was. I didn't even know it was in the box because we only had a couple of seconds to look at it, Connor, didn't we? Like, to be fair. Yeah. And it was completely on the other side. So when you're at a game, you do miss a lot. And it's at home, you get the saturated coverage. That's where you see most of it, which is kind of ironic, but that's the way it is. I didn't even realize it was in the box, but he should be going up to the referee and saying, like, he's put him a fucking short ref. I mean, yeah, you he knows he's been pulled. Far, far mm-hmm. had to look at that. They should have made a bigger Does, thing. And even then, even the coaching staff, they've got that game in front of them, the coaching staff. They have it, don't they? But, most yeah. of them. Do you think, though? No, that's true. What kind of, do you think, though, like, uh, or, and Martin, open question, and, and obviously to Roar Faithful, and we'll get back to your comments. Um, do you think, like, if he makes a bigger, a bigger fuss, about that and then the players swarm around the referee because you know if they see him going to the referee saying pull me short the, re- the players are going to react because that's what players do then maybe he goes okay let's have a look at it let's have a look at the var Why? and then maybe have a closer look i do i honestly they... i 100 do agree with you but the thing is they literally played on straight away i know the ball didn't it go out of yeah. play for a goal kick but they literally just put it straight back and play and as soon as they play starts and the referee doesn't stop it before the ball comes back into play. What can you do? Like, I know Martin's saying about the uh, management, but they have the same replays as us in that sense of looking back on it. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, the ball would have been back and play. Everyone would have been playing on. The ref would have moved on. They say the VAR looked at it, but what did the VAR look at it in the initial angle that it was? Not the side on and the backwards facing Ferguson and Gahey. So I just think it's awful, awful officiating. I do think Ferguson obviously should be like running up maybe run over to linesman because the linesman had the best view on the pitch of it. But yeah, it is just so, it's so disappointing because I know we got Barris in the end, but it's a totally different game if you go 1-0 up. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have been a red card because he was going away from goal. I doubt it would be a red card. People saying no, it's it straight been. In. No, 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 no way. Absolutely. Maybe a, a booking. Martin, um, we, we, we saw it, Connor and I, because we had perf- perfect view of it. Um, I'm not sure if you saw it in the telly because I haven't really mm-hmm. seen it back. For the goal, Evan Ferguson, Tries to play a ball, miss, it goes wrong. He thinks it's going out. He throws a bit of a strop to keep it in. Bosch, one, two passes. Um, I think Harry Kane played a ball in, didn't he? And then yeah, Liam Scales takes it. Yeah. yeah, for the penalty. Was that shown on the telly? Did you see that with Ferguson? You did see him losing the ball. But, I mean, that's. And, and even he Lee had Carsey a strop said, after. Yeah, Lee Carsey said that, you know, really happy. Like, we were talking about the, the quality of the pass. It was an absolutely brilliant ball from Harry World Kane. Class. Um. And he was—he was. I thought he was good for England last night. He dropped off. 
Like he he was coming back. They're such a good side. But he, even what he does, he's just clever. He was coming deep, and it like even for throw ones, he was like a right back and stuff. It was crazy where he was playing all night. It was unbelievable, I thought. Um, just of that that kind of mentality of that leadership with him. But yeah, the pass is is interesting actually. Uh, Odowda, they said on the TV. Uh, obviously, I don't agree with this. They said he should have been inside, like a little bit closer, could have been a bit closer to kind of help a bit. Um, but you know, he. It was never a yellow card as well. That if that had been outside the box, yeah, if that had been outside the box, he wouldn't be getting a yellow card for that type of foul. Because I he, don't know. He was a was lovely in. first touch coming in. It was a lo- yeah, but you double punished us. Then this is we had a, this chat uh, in the, uh, after the game. Just you, you like. No I think double right, jeopardy is only for a straight red, though, Martin. I think you can only have double Maybe, jeopardy yeah. for a straight red. Yeah, I Maybe. think because of where he is on the pitch and where the touch is, and it is. Yeah. I know it's a goal scoring opportunity in in the end, but it is he does try to play the ball, but I do think I think if that was the other end of the pitch, we'd be screaming if Bellingham didn't yeah, get a second yellow right. for it. But he probably wouldn't have got it because he's Bellingham, but it's just it's how the football thing, yeah, works. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. he was naive though for the first book in as well. That was absolutely that was ridiculous. Is this is this like people are saying it's the worst group of Irish players we've ever had. I, I think on the pitch, I think skill wise, no, it's it's not. I, I thought I, I Yeah, I genuinely believe that. No. We, we, no. We had, we had some really bad ones under uh, Martin O'Neill. But mentally, I think this is the weakest I have ever seen an Irish team. I think mentally they're very weak. And I think that was... A, and I, I don't know how the manager corrects that because he doesn't have them enough. Like, to go one... Like, first time we've ever gone into 10 men under the manager, I believe, under this manager. Probably the first time we've gone into 10 men for a very long time. Um, I don't think we ever went down to t- probably Nations League, Finland, James was it? Or James Wales at home against Wales, wasn't it? Wales, yeah, like behind closed doors, like that. Yeah. You know, so we, we don't know what this team's really made of, and and that's you know you, you think back oh, to two thousand. Oh, Matt Doherty got sent off. Sorry, yes, yeah, in Greece last. But that year. was what two minutes was it? Mm, last couple of minutes, yeah. So that was kind of a, that was almost at the final whistle, wasn't it? But like yeah. this is the first time, like you saw the team in two thousand one against the Dutch. You know, you saw what they were made of mentally very strong. They 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 galvanized it, rolled their luck, came back. This team fell apart and like a papa dam. Absolutely fell apart. And how do you do that? Like how if you're the manager, that's an open question again, lads, whoever first wants to answer it. <laughs> if if you, if, but if you're the manager, how do you how do you like you must have your head in your hands and you, you like what do you do to, to address that? Yeah, football at, uh, football at the end of the day, the biggest thing at my eyes, football in elite level sport, no matter what scenario you're in, is momentum. They had the momentum. They had the momentum, especially after one goes in. It's a difference. It's a big difference if we get a second yellow from open play and we get a chance to regroup and get back in the shape. But the fact goes to 10 men and 1 0 to England does play a huge part. But the mentality with the squad just isn't there at the moment. It's just. As you you do wonder how we can get back up to that level. Like the first half was the perfect example of a elite mentality for an Irish side. Rugged at the back, strong, getting stuck in. Malumbi getting Kane booked. I know Malumbi got booked for that, but he shouldn't have. And that's how you he was in their heads. Bellingham got a yellow for the time Madawake he followed it or followed out. God knows how Bellingham started arguing over that because the most obvious foul I've ever seen in my life. And they were rattled, and that's how you, that's that's an elite mentality in that first half. It was brilliant, Festy playing without fear. Even though Dido was playing without fear, both of them picking the ball up and running at men. We're Martin, creeping into the game, aren't we? Like, like, yeah, we were. We were coming into the game. Should have got a penalty. It's not like Ferguson didn't didn't give up because he should have got a penalty. The lads regrouped and went again. Festy was the best player in the pitch. It's just, but it's night and day the mentality from first half to second half. England were always going to start that second half strong. And we had to, it was about, that was the step up in mentality to get to the next level. How do we bounce back from a team coming at us playing lovely yeah. football? They weren't even playing lovely football. They just. Now nah, we just, they, we just down tools. Like yeah. we down tools and, you know, Martin, like I, I, I said it, Con and I said it, like we're going to get a 10, 15 minute barrage for the first 10, 15 minutes. Then, you know, you, you creep into it. Half time, you know, probably came at the wrong time. You know, the old cliche. Then the second half, you think we're going to get another barrage. Just keep it cool. Keep doing what you're doing. Creep back into it. And you never know. You might nick something. You might nick something. At the end of it, out ball fest. He was brilliant. And Smanich came into the game as well, didn't he? But, like, we just fell apart, didn't we? We did. But, you know, you have to kind of forget this game. 
like the 10, like it, it shouldn't damage them that much. England are an elite side. He brought in, like no one even mentioned the players who were missing last night after they win 5-0. Now they were a bit over the top ITV and stuff. And, you know, because now they're super again and they're going to win World Cups and everything again. But, you know, th- these lads coming into the squad, they were playing for their futures. And, you know, that's one thing Lee Carsey has done. He He's brought in these players. He's played them. And they're now in there, and they've all performed. Like all of, like two of them got debut goals. I think last night, Bowen's first touch was a goal. It was his first touch. Yeah, the ball. Yeah. He was only that when he ten seconds on from him coming on, and he scored. Um, so that that's a very nice kind of galvanized squad there. Who who you know, we were you know we were it was going to be tight against eleven of them, like eleven v eleven. But when we go down, we just haven't got the quality there. And we were overstretched. I mean, even some of the goal goals are, are very soft and poorly defended. I think they'll be really seriously pissed off with that. Um, you know, it, but but they were a little bit lucky with it. You know, the one, the cross, Collins. And Colin, yeah. Yeah, him, yeah, and it yeah, hits yeah. him on the chest. Otherwise, he has kind of cleared it to the edge of the box. Now, someone might have been there, but they didn't seem to be on the footage I saw. But yeah, that was a little bit of luck for them. Um, and... So no, I, I don't want it damaging well, the lads. I d- yeah, I don't really want it damaging the lads because, you know, th- this team, they he has said it, hasn't he, Heimler, that they are a bit mentally weak. I think there's a valid re- question to ask is, do you remember what, what David Ford was involved, wasn't he, in the last camp and kind of the psychology aspect of it? I think FAI should probably look at that again to see what is yeah. needed there. You know, like I know they're all top pros and playing you know, professional footballers and, you know, they, sh- they will have an elite mentality for wherever they're playing, but yeah, but, but confidence they shouldn't confidence fall apart like yeah, they should not fall apart yeah. like that. And that's where Collins coming over at the end is all apologetic. Like they did, they just gave up, they dropped off, and you can't do that against a team like England. I, you just can't. Uh, yeah, there's a there's, there's a comment there about about that. I have something to say about that, to be honest. Uh, um, that whole thing, but um. Yeah, um, very disappointing, of course. And you know, I know Dunphy let him have it, didn't he? He's he was pro Kenny, and then he was kind of having to go Hamer he- saying that Collins, oh, what's he doing playing him in the Paul McGrath role? Really, wasn't he in the Paul McGrath role? He used to play there on the Jack. Um, uh, first half we were excellent. Second half fell apart. We're, we'll move it because we're going to get to the comments and we'll cover different um, facets of the game. So what next for the boys of Green? Of course, we finished third in the group. There it is. England win it. 15 points. Greece, uh, second 15 points, but they go into a playoff. Republic of Ireland, we're in a playoff. We finish sixth, or sorry, with six points in third. And of course, Finland are relegated to Group C. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we go into a draw uh, for the playoff on Friday for games in March. Home and away playoff. And there are four possibilities uh, that we can get. So basically, uh, whoever finished second in their group in League C going to a playoff to face whoever finished third in their group in League B. Adios. So here we go. So here are our potential playoff opponents, which was just finalized tonight. So Slovakia, the lowest ranked, or the highest ranked, I should say, 41st, Bulgaria, 84th, Armenia, 99th, and Kosovo, 101st in the world. We, of course, are currently 66th, but we'll probably fall even further now um the draw is this friday the proceedings start at 11 o'clock uk and irish time uh this friday uh the playoffs are played on the 20th and 23rd of march or played in between them they are home and away legs um so i'm not sure maybe it's seeding. we're home we're home second because we're the higher seed there you go thank you very much Connor. so we will be so we have a great chance there so lads i'm gonna ask you um who Martin, who do you want out of that? Oh, I'd like a trip to Kosovo. I don't like yeah, Slovakia, me too. so I don't want to go there. Um, <laughs> yeah, Horrible. I hate them. Um, <laughs> and, Jesus. Not even about their football team. Yeah, uh, just didn't like that trip when I went there before. Miserable fuckers. Um, 2010? Yeah. Was that the one in Shalina, was it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I was there as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Bulgaria wouldn't be too bad. Um, God, they've oh, they're, Jesus, they're eighty fourth in the world. Well, and then uh, yeah, Kosovo's the one, isn't it? When are we going to get to go? I there want again? Kosovo history. Yeah, I yeah. Think, uh, nice. 
I've been to all the other, I, the only country, sorry, I haven't been to Bulgaria, I mean, or Kosovo. I've been to Slovakia. I don't want to go back to Slovakia. Uh, I don't hate it like you do. I just, you know, I just want to see a different part of the world. Uh, what about you, Connor? What do you want? I don't really care. I'll be happy with all of them. They're all, they're actually all, all right away days. I've heard some people say Armenia was pretty crap as a way there, but um, I'd take any of them. Uh, I know people are saying Slo- Slovakia are a good side, which they are compared to the other three. They're miles ahead. And they would, there would be one we'd be against. Where at our current state, it would probably be a fifty-fifty game. But I would like to say we'd fancy our chances against any of them. Like you're not really a football fan, or you're not if you don't fancy our chances against Slovakia with a home leg second. But uh, probably Kosovo would be the ideal one, as you said, just getting to go somewhere different. When are we ever going to get to go there? But I would, I'm not too fast to we get to be honest. I mean- they're not really direct flights, are they? Even Slovakia, that's like you, you fly into uh, Vienna. That's how we did it last time. Flew to Vienna, bus into Bratislava, and then you had to get the FEI bus into Shalina, I remember. Do you remember that, Martin? Um, you, were you there? Were you? I bet you were on the fucking train with John Delaney, weren't you? I wasn't. No, no, I wasn't. I don't know if I went one? that one. I was there no. for when, when was it? Uh, no, I was there for Stan. Stan. The collapse, Stephen Ireland. Oh, and that that's Screamer by uh, Ke- Kevin Doyle. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. No, I was there. I was in the one of Jelena. We were promised, Connor. It's actually in the in the, in the Champagne Football book, but we were promised. Oh no, no, no. It'll be in, it'll be in Bratislava, like absolutely. Uh, and besides, we've gone past ninety days because within ninety days you have to wherever it is. You've got up to ninety days to change it. And uh, yeah, they changed it to Jelena. I was like a two and a half hour drive right up to the Czechia border. God, that was a dump. Great though. We were in. We were in behind. Like we're. In behind a big fence. I don't know any of you guys out there watching it in the Royal Faithful. And by the way, who do you want? Tell us. Who do you want? Here, here are your choices again: Slovakia, Bulgaria, Armenia, Kosovo. We can fly directly you... to Bulgaria, can't we? Sorry, yes, yeah, yeah. I'd imagine so. Well, definitely from London, anyway. That's the beauty, Martin, when you live in London, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think Armenia would be probably it's the Caucasus, isn't it? That's like uh, that'd be a bit like. Um, Georgia. I know they don't like each other, Armenia and Georgia. So that's no, it's Armenia, Azerbaijan. So that's like probably a trip, a flight to Turkey or Athens, and then fucking Athens again, and then over <laughs> to Armenia. I'll, I'll actually go to Turkey, just in the point of I'll do a stopover in Istanbul, just uh, out of principle. And of course, Kosovo. God knows how you do that. I think it's Munich, Martin. Is it the Kosovo? From Does London, it... it seems to be Munich. Yeah, and from Ireland, it seems to be like Zurich. Zurich, yeah, fair. You know, not, not for too people bad. who actually are Irish who watch the show, which we all you don't have. Ha- you don't have to be born in Ireland to feel Irish, Connor. Or, but right. you usually I tend to have an Irish passport, not a British one, isn't that right, Brandy? That's right. That I have right. an Irish passport. I showed you my Irish passport, and besides, out of the three of us, they should, check, they should check them. Yeah, out of the three of us, out of the three of us, I was the only one born in the Republic of Ireland, so. Uh, now you're still now you're still lying, now Prendy. Now you're still lying because his <laughs> feelings are hurt. His feelings are uh, hurt. My feelings are never hurt. Um, but yeah, tell us what you want. Uh, <laughs> tell us who you want there. Um, do you want an easier? I mean, yeah, Costa one hundred first. We should batter them home and wait. Well, <laughs> yeah, but I'm looking at um because the games you said so that will be if it's between that them dates twentieth and twenty third. It means we're playing on the twenty third, doesn't it? Yeah, at home. I'd imagine yeah. it's twentieth and twenty third. Yeah. Yeah, so then you're looking at yeah, the away game then. Um, because it's going to be the stadium capacities as well. That's going to kill us as fans. Um, 18,000, I think it is. Jeez. The National, the Olympic Stadium in Kosovo. Um, just looking that up now. Um, yeah, so that that's so what we get 10%? Oh, no, 5%, isn't it? It's not a lot. Yeah. And it will be no. one that people will. All right. I like England's, like I said, it, there is interest. There'll be, you know, we'd bring, we'd bring a thousand to that. Yeah. I would think. Nah, I mean, I, I'd be interested to see now. I'd be booking my flights right away to see what happens. But that will be like, um, we're going to do something, lads. We're going to do something on the on the Friday, are we? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah, going to yeah. go live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Live reaction yeah. to the draw. We're going to do a live reaction. So basically, once it's out, we're going to be, we're going to be out. We're going to whip it out, you are, and we're going to give you mm. a live reaction. Um, right, on the 21s, Connor, we were asked uh, for you to talk about the under 21, so give us a little round. Oh, it, was, it was for the collection of us, it was for all of us to bring our knowledge of the under 21s. What did you no, think no, of the I... under 21 games, Martin? 
What's that? What did you think of the under twenty ones here? I don't watch it. No. Nah, to so be fair, English uh, fucking organising Irish I know, football I'm only, I'm only winding you up. I'm only winding you up. No, but I actually, I watched the first one in the Viva, and I watched the second one in Wembley. Uh, the first game was a bit of a Sweden actually were the better side. I heard today that that Sweden side that they played actually had a lot of lads that had already played together last year. Under 20s, they're one of the countries that has an under 20s, and Ireland don't have an under 20s, I believe, just probably due to financial reasons. It's probably cost a lot more money to bring an extra squad of players in. So it took a while, I think, for the lads to adjust. There was a few lads, that pre- particularly the other day, the likes of uh, Jimmy Mullins, Glorian Zigu, uh, Rocco Vata was excellent the other day. He's one who, once he starts playing for Watford regularly, like I, well, he's already playing regularly enough, but starting every week, I think he's a cert to come into the Ireland squad because he's he's a ridiculous talent and he's just that little bit, he's just so close to break it, to breaking in as a first team regular every week. So I. I'd say by the end of this season, we could see Rocco Vata in the senior squad. But James Abanco again, or Dave, if you want to say his name for us. James. Hmm. What's his <laughs> name? James Abanco. Yeah. He, uh, it, it doesn't work when you say yeah. it before me, Connor. Yeah, I, 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 I can even hear through your Ulster drawl, don't worry. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, James Abanco is a top player. But it was great because a lot of them lads, like likes of Glorin Zigu, Kevin Zeffi, uh, Jamie Mullins haven't been involved in the Irish under, underage setup in a number a couple of years because of uh, just their under 19s they didn't go as well as they thought a couple of years ago and it would have been a, probably a year and a half some of them two years some of them haven't been involved in an our in an Irish jersey so it was a uh, it was good to see them back involved and it was particularly with like the likes of Zor- Glory and Zigu is to see the levels that they're playing at now in terms of their ability and who can really kick on going into this next campaign. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy with how it went, and I believe that they're happy involved with the camp, especially just to get just to get a win yesterday as well was a, is a big thing to, as we like to say, the metal block with either side. So to get a win helps a lot. Big time. And, of course, we will be getting... We're, we're going to be doing a lot of good things next season uh, with the under-21s. Oh, and all of sorry, if I might jump in the under-19s as well. They Go have their last qualifying game tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, which you actually can watch. Moldova are doing a great job, actually. They're streaming all the games, and you can buy each game for a euro, so it's well worth a euro. Uh, they had a brilliant win the other day against Azerbaijan. I think the big name coming out of that is Aaron Achoa Maloney. I don't know if you've seen the Malaga youngster who uh, scored an absolute world the other day. Starting every week for Malaga. was starting every week last season, actually, in the third division of Spain at 16. They got promoted. Now they're in the second tier of Spain, which is, could you imagine, the equivalent to the championship? But well, wouldn't be just as good, but it's still a high standard. And he's playing every week for Malaga, who are a huge club in Spain. And it's good to have a lad, Irish lad, playing in Spain who's technically gifted. And he was superb the other day. And he was rewarded with his goals. So the under-19s, I think they're they're as good as qualified. It would need to take losing tomorrow. And Moldova would probably need to win, like, 6-0 against Azerbaijan, but they haven't scored a goal yet. So, But Ireland play Iceland tomorrow, and if Ireland win the game, they top the group in going into the elite rounds. There you go. Thank you very much for that. Of course, yeah. you want to you want to get more stuff like that? Connor over at Rep Tracker, Rep Tracker on Twitter or Twitter, as uh, one of you said in the comments there, which we've got to get into. And of course, uh, we will be doing a lot more underage stuff. Oh, God. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing a lot more underage football. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> God, um, it was a long weekend. Uh, youth football, youth football. I was going to say youth football. Uh, we're going to do a lot more youth football. It's a nice just, podcast. Uh, yeah, uh, but just on that, um, I, we was, I had a good chat with James McManus, who's at Bowes. He's injured at the moment. I had a good chat with his mum and dad, actually, who were over for the game, members of the sports club. And James actually goes to all the Ireland home games when they when it's not clashing with the under-21s. But, yeah, he's getting back fit, um, hopeful of, you know, his mum and dad were telling me that, um, you know, the, the, with the under twenty one lads, you know, that he was probably playing ahead of them sometimes in in the in with the nineteens and things. So yeah, he would have been, yeah. He, he will he will go in there, um, and that, again, he's that's a good position for us, you know, the num- number six kind of role um, coming in there, and that's what we need. So hopefully he'll kick on a little bit now, but you know, it's a big step up, of course, senior level. But um, yeah, he, he's one to definitely follow as well. Yeah, really good player. There you go. Right. Uh, we're going to move on. But yeah, as I said, 
you football lads. It's it's been a hell of a twenty twenty four for us, but we're we're gonna be doing a lot more in twenty twenty five and I can't wait to get started. Right, chaps, are we ready for the and I always do this comments. Yes. Yeah. Oh by the way, thousand people watching us live. Thank you very much for that. On a Monday night. It is Monday, isn't it? What's Monday? I don't know. I'm confused. What are you talking yeah. about? Monday? I don't know. Today? Ma- oh, it's day Monday. Yeah. Oh, today's Monday. Oh, yeah. today's, today's Monday. Monday. See, I'm yeah. going to... Yeah. Um, sorry, no, no. You wait for speak, lads. Match day plus one. Um, so it's match day plus one. So for a th- over a thousand people watching us on a Monday night, nearly 11 o'clock at night, Irish and UK time. That's fantastic stuff because I get it. Let's be, uh, We understand people are a little bit knackered. They're probably, you know, in bed. Eddie buys his hell Martin's still awake. I do not know. <laughs> I, I'm getting messages. I like you know, I am getting messages from people saying like thanks for such a great weekend and stuff. And yeah, you know, just I want to give a shout out to Catalpa. They're unbelievable. And if you are, you know, like the Confederation Supporters Clubs, lots of them come uh, arrange things at the you know, the, the Lansdowne Road Rugby Club before the games and Catalpa play there. Uh Kieran and Phelan, unbelievable and just Brilliant. got the absolute got everyone going and it was really lovely as well i asked Phelan to do me a favor it was the anniversary of course of alan mclaughlin scoring the goal that qualified us for world cup 94 and he done the alan who uh little poem thing that he wrote absolutely brilliant and it it, it really, really was fitting that he did it on the anniversary of that iconic moment yeah you know the first time i finally got to meet Phelan. Phelan. um yeah. i'd i'd seen him i'd never got to actually say hello to him and he walked past me and stuff he goes your day but your day done it Yes, I am. And I was like, shook his hand. I was very, no, no, like, because uh, I follow him on Twitter. He, you know, we follow each other on Twitter and we yeah, we'd interact. Well, and it was just great, lad. Like a brilliant band great. as well, you know. So that, that... Not fantastic. And uh, just back to your comment, kind of, sorry, uh, who who was fucking name dropping? You saw the clip. I don't know if you saw the clip, Martin, um, this morning that, that I sent you. It's on the live post match mm-hmm. reaction of him name dropping. Oh, look, he follows me on Twitter. He, go on. He follows you on Twitter. He was a fa- <laughs> Martin Prendergast. And <laughs> and the uh, fella who's who who's Jude Bellingham's father. Yes, yes, he yeah, does. Just... Fucking sticky, oh, right. his sticky oh, was giving him as well. Nice. Yeah, um, I, tell Hello, I, I sent John O'Shea. I'm going to name drop it. I sent John O'Shea a video from the Cladder saying this is this is what it's like, and I said it to David Carell as well, and said this is you know we will give you one hell of a support there to the season. So, um, and we did. To be fair, I thought we were good. Did, the fans. Yeah. No, no, superb. I mean, not a lot to shout about in the second half, really. Yeah. Um, no, no, it, it 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 was absolutely superb. Um, yeah, Carsley last night. Um, he was, he was kind of you saw he was probably giving his socks, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, because he on the TV. Yeah, delighted with yeah. themselves after the the uh, Boeing goal. But obviously, that's because they have a set piece. That was yeah. a set piece they worked on, and when that yeah. comes off, it's brilliant as a coach. And uh, did you see all Grealish and Bellingham putting out? Thank you, Mess. Just saying thanks for putting the joy back in England jersey. A big oh, what a... shot at public yeah. guard circuit and his staff. So it was strange. Well, Aussie Grealish, he got dropped by Southgate for the Euros. So do you know what's funny though? Why, like, I don't know why Bellingham was. Uh, oh, go on well, no, because he was having issues, wasn't he, in, in the camp uh, during the Euros. But you know what the funny thing is? Typical English. They have, a, they have a really good coach there who grew into the job and did really well. Played some good football, you know, lost at home to Greece, did the business in Greece. Very tough place to go. Like, they hadn't lost a game there for about three years. No, that's, that's the thing. Keane said that, Dave. They run him out of the job. He got, back. he got organized them again. Like, he lifted them back up after the Greece kind of one at home. And then they fucking ran him the, out of the job. The media didn't want him doing it with the with the anthem shite, you know, even oh. talk about oh, this. And like, he, I, I mean, I remember reading something with him ages ago. We spoke about it on the, the pod in the past. And he said, like, you know, going to the World Cup in 2002, which he did, he didn't really feel very part of it kind of thing. He played no. a few minutes there. But it's, you know, I think they know he's a good lad. But, you know, he's got aspirations to be a top coach. And even it's just absurd, even think, looking back. I mean, and we know we, lot, we spoke an awful lot about it, didn't we? With the speculation of who we managed and we wanted him. But he, he'd have been crazy to say the island job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we'll have him in 10 years' time. Yeah, we we need to sort our own house in order. I just think it's hilarious. Like, they've got rid of him, a guy that galvanizes players. Sorry, Connor, that galvanizes players, and they're going to bring us an absolute headbanger like Thomas Tuchel. Who's nah, he's a good guy. He's a good before. gaffer, though. I know he's a headbanger, but he's a good gaffer. He could do a great, great job. Also, on the national anthem point of view, it must have been a proud moment for Martin Prendergast yesterday. 
when his good mate Callum O'Dowda sang her on the vein for the first time? Did you teach yeah. him? <laughs> he'd know that. He'd know that. His, his, father, his grandfather was a famous Irish tenor. So he'd know, yeah, but, he'd know how to sing that. But it was a lot of lads don't sing it though, do they? Do you, is it, do, can you watch it? Sing it? it? Heimer has, uh, did you not see Heimer said before about how important it is to learn the national anthem of the country? Yeah. And I wish all the other players at the Pride is Mick McCarthy. I, I, I don't. Buy that. We're not going to have this argument again, but I, think I did. No, I agree, Connor. Kind of, I think they should sing it because it's, it's it should be. I mean, look, and I love it when the fans <laughs> sing it in the in the stadium. It was very good. That's when you're from Dublin. And it's the last thing we did, I and mean, it's the last thing we did before we left the Cladder. Wait, actually, did you? Oh, bless the anthem. You. Yeah, that's the last song I did. So when you're from Dublin, you're it's from Dublin. Me. When you're from Dublin, you're not singing national anthem. You're Irish enough. You're more Irish than anyone else in the country because you're in the capital city. Deal with it. Anyway, we're going to move it on there. <laughs> I've just alienated the other 31 counties. And Connor is fucking raging. Look at your little face there. Look at him. He's going mad. Right. We're going to move it on. Let's go to the comments and see what you have to say. You're probably going to get a lot of stick over there. All right. Let's go see what our favorites are. Quite enough night tonight. But I mean, that's understandable, isn't it? Uh, Magpie over on Twitter. Sending at 2 or 6 a.m. Where are you, Mike Pye? Uh, we be back. Good man, Mike Pye. Over I think he's Twitter. probably in New York somewhere, isn't it? Five hours ahead. Not 2 or 6 in the morning. By no, the way. They're, they're, no, they're behind. Are they? Are they? I they're yeah, so. Mike Pye, tell us where you're from. Also, Magpie. by the way. Where are you from? We, we never even said. By the way, we talked about the match and we never even said the positive how good the first half was. Well, I, I kind of mentioned it in past. We were very good. Mm, felt so good. It was a very. Imp- it was our best we've been set up in a long time in the first half. Yeah, but yeah, I don't think they did though, did they? We didn't have a shot. Uh, got, no, they had a couple, but like it, you know, shot. but but there was nothing. Yeah, in it, like a minute, but there's nothing like you know. They had no shots on target. Was until, was very good, yeah. wasn't it? I, I thought I'd, like I, I'm. I know we're going to come to the comments, Dave, but I thought Odalda, he was a. He's gonna grow into that role. Like, I know that you're so, oh the loving now starts. No, I, but, but I think really he's very, that. very good. Like and, and going on. And David Connolly, I've mentioned it on him. Follow him on Twitter, obviously former Irish player. He does some great analysis of, of stuff of, of the movement and, and the patterns that they should be doing. And he criticized O'Dowda for a little bit of going back against Finland last week. Um and he criticized it. He said this is you know, you, you didn't need to go back there, he's got to be braver. And then it, it was so different last night. They really had him on the front foot. Um, and Festi, I thought as well, just he's the, he's a mad. legend, isn't he? Festi, you just can't, you just cannot love yeah, Festi it? enough. No, he imagine like the, the song now, like that. Well, it's just the chant, wasn't it? Festi, that was. But they, they, they mentioned, yeah. though, didn't they? Like before, like the manager said before the Finland game, he wasn't very happy with the intensity. I think they thought it'd be a stroll in the park. And then, of course, it's England, so you're going to be up for it. You know, look. Excuse me. Irish teams are always up for the big games. They always are, and our levels do go up against the bigger teams. And they went up, even in the home game against England. They went up for ten minutes, and then we just fell apart. We capitulated, um, and they just they just exposed the uh, the space between uh, Doherty and Coleman. Coleman, of course, the uh, the right of a back three, and Doherty just as a right wing back, loads of space, and they completely dominated us after that. But there's a lot of problems there, you know. I think, like I've said it before, but the Nations League. I this is what I'm gonna. I know it's kind of you turned around and said that. No, wouldn't we go for a seeding, right? Would it be the worst thing in the world though for us to get relegated to to play the teams in Group C a little bit, you know, to to get a breather basically? Because if you look where we are, right, we're not as good. We're not. We're nowhere near as good as England. We're miles away from them. We're not really. Greece, we can't really touch them for whatever reason. We can't lay, we can't really lay a glove on them. We never did really, and we're just about better than Finland. Maybe treading water. We're treading water now against a team that's just been relegated, and there seems to be a decline there because in the last Nations League, I think we got seven points, didn't we? And we beat like beat a top ranked one of the top ranked teams in that, which is Scotland. We should have, we should have probably got promoted then. We probably should have topped that group off the chances we had. Remember the Collins goal away at Ukraine? We sh- probably should have yeah. won that game and Troy Parrott was one-on-one in Scotland away, so we probably should have topped that group. But we've regressed big time. So, you know, that's where we're at. Like, we're mm. we're, we're, we're very bad. We're, we're treading water. We've regressed yeah. big time. Look at Scotland yeah. now. They're in the yeah, playoffs. I, I need to interrupt you there. I 
do. Whilst I would say probably if this camp next Nations League was starting in 2025, but it's not. We have World Cup qualifiers next, so we're going to have World Cup qualifiers, and then we'll have a Nations League campaign. I'd yeah. imagine that's how it works. So you're this will be another when we hope in another whatever year and a half time, two years, whatever the next campaign comes around, our squad should be a lot stronger. Like we've seen today, Boston now always back on grass today, and he, I expect him to make a big difference to the team. Maybe not in the next next camp, next couple of months, but in the long run, and Andy Moore coming to the team and Finizaz coming to the team. I think by the time the next Nations League campaign comes around, we sh- there should be a huge improvement. The whole World Cup qualifier and campaign coming over. Hopefully, we're in the World Cup, which we can't say is impossible because you just you never know. You never know we could be there. So I do think, yeah, Dave, you would be right. If this started next next May or June, we went into Nations League and we wanted to get the confidence back up, but we probably would be saying we're too good for this level. We're, the thing is, the same old adage is like, oh, we need to get relegated. And then we'll get back to Group C next time and we'll win every single game in a stroll in the park and everyone will be like, oh, we're too good. We've got no benefit out of the Stations League. It's just boring friendlies. Yeah, but that's the, that's the problem we've had though, isn't it? We haven't had friendlies. Like We had friendlies this season, but due to the, the manager fiasco, um, you know, Heimer comes in his first game is England at home it was completely wasted like we had loads of friendlies that we could have done something with including the ones before the Euros which is maddening absolutely maddening and next year I don't think we're going to get we're not going to get I think we get a few friendlies next season I'm not sure the qualifiers don't start in September is what I believe so yeah we should I'd I'd imagine there's a June campus there always is so yeah so it might, might be you know things might improve hopefully we'll We'll get a handy draw in the Nations League. We'll hopefully do the business there. And then, you know, get a June camp in. And then, yeah, yeah. get a June camp in, get the players together, and then hopefully kick off the World yeah. Cup. I don't know. Teams. as yeah. But I know, Dave, do you think, I know you were saying about getting relegated being a good thing. Do you not think it would be a bad thing when you look at it in hindsight, the thing of the next Nations League won't be till after the next World Cup qualifiers? No, because we'll probably go in and piss it. Um, if we're in a, if we're in a good space, but there's no guarantee because like you have to remember, lads, like we're, we're relying on on players, so we will get to the comments. <laughs> um, no, but, yeah, but no, 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 I just want to make this point, Mark. Yeah, like we're we're relying on players to come through, right? But what if they get injured? Michael Abafemi was was the next big thing. He's he's injury prone. Um, you've had other players that got injured because they're at, at that young stage, or there are clubs where a manager comes in, they don't fancy him. Andrew Amabomadeli is um, is a prime example of that. Like we're we're relying, like there's nothing in our destiny. You know what I mean? Like we, we're not masters of our own destiny. We're relying on ifs, buts, and maybes. Like we're kind of wing. We're on a bit of a wing and a prayer at the moment. We're hoping whilst in a while we'll we'll come in. We're hoping he'll develop into a player. We're hoping Andy Moran goes to the next level and doesn't just fall away. I know he's I know he's got the ability, he's got the tools for it, but it doesn't mean he's going to become a top, top player. You know, we all thought Troy Parrott would absolutely smash it. He was banging goals in in Premier League 1, or Premier League 2, sorry, the uh, the under-21s league, and he struggled big time. We lost him for a number of years. Now, he's doing okay in Holland and in the Netherlands, but he's not really doing it for Ireland. I, do you not think our... You don't think our expectations have changed though on these Irish players because we we were in such a bad place for such a while that we were relying on we were thinking Aaron Connolly, Jason Malumby, Troy Parrott, uh, Michael they were all scoring goals in Premier League two and that's what we were like even Mipo Odebiko if you remember he was scoring for absolute yeah, yeah. fun and then, and we were saying oh this player this player but now we have players actually are scoring in men's football that we c- can say, we can at least say. They've shown glimpses of what they can do. Like Boston Owl was the best midfielder in League One last season. But what I'm saying is, we we need a lot of moving parts to click. Yeah, I do agree, but I do think look at Evan, think... look at Evan Ferguson. Now, last season, best thing since sliced bread. Fant- and by the way, fantastic player. I, I'm a big fan of Evan Ferguson. Now he can't even get in the squad. He can't even get in the team. So we're relying on a lot of moving parts here. Not, I think that's been an issue. Matt, what do you think? We're we're around. Yeah, no, 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 no. Agree, Let me how right I am, please. No, no, I agree with your points and stuff. But like, but it is, yeah. Look, we we do need players to come through and, and need to push and challenge people. Um, and and you know, look, even just look back at the group, we scored three goals, I think, in six games. Yeah, that that wasn't. And 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 that's with the attacking talent. Like, we will see progress. Like, we, we've seen. Um, I mean, it comes back to the management appointment as well. It was too delayed that. You know how again this stupid idea they did. I mean, love John O'Shea. Didn't wouldn't have had a problem with him getting the job, but um, 
you know, we, we, we waited, didn't we, too long, like, to get the manager in. And, you know, then, then you have, look at the shock on Connor's face. Um, but, you know, like, no, you know, you know we've just got, I, I think, where we've got the players, you know, Schmonick's now, he, he's, what's he got now, eight, nine caps? He's he, he was never used under, um, you know, never used under Kenny. So, and we had, like, what's going on in the background there. We, you know, we have had injuries. I mean, look, we, we'll have Ogbené back, hopefully. I mean, Festy's come through and everyone's calling for him to start now. So we, yeah. we do have the players. I, I'm, I'm not going to have it that we don't. Um, and hopefully now it will calm down a bit and get a bit of structure. But like, I was just, what, what, while I was listening to you there, the, the World Cup draw is obviously going to be in December, I think, as well, isn't it? Or January. I don't know when that is. Yeah, it's but, December. Um, it's December. Yeah. So 16th, I think, is it? Me... We're not going to be in a, no. we're going to be in a 14 group, I think. Yep. Is that right? Yep. yep. So if that's the case, it means that, we that starts in September and we've got the dates ready for this but it does mean that we will have obviously we've got these games the Nations League in March there is a June window if we'd have been in the bigger group yeah. the World Cup now we can't December 13th it. December 13th yeah. by the way it's draw. so we now can go into we, we will have that window in June he's got to get that um he's got to get a camp in them he's got to fit that into them somewhere that, that's one thing I would be helpful about and then we will get to the comments <laughs> yeah we got, got one comment. We know, but we know the dates. Like we do know the dates. Yeah. We've got like so ma- ma- match day five. Well, it will be match day one like, for us. Um, but, September. There is reason to be hopeful, right? Hopefully, we get. Hopefully, we get handy draw in March. That's the next game. We will get England. We can't so, March. I can't. We can't. Can't, can't we get England? No, because no, we're not. top. I'm well, talking about March. Sure. No. Yeah, we can't get them. Okay. We can Come only on. get teams. We can only get teams that are in that are playing them in March, I believe. Because it's fourteen groups, because oh. we can't start a qualifiers in March, so we can't get England. We can, yeah. I think, we can get the likes of Portugal, whoever's finished like so, top. Oh, I don't know whatever our rankings is, but we can't get, okay. and we can't get Northern Ireland either. Oh, fuck, I want to do the clatter ring again. Ah, Jesus, not... but no, I mean, look. As we said, we'll move on to the comments. Look, there, there is a chance now. There is an opportunity here. Hopefully for March, we'll we'll get a handy draw on Friday. March, that's the playoff. We stay in League B. Fair enough. We'll stay in League B. We'll get a camp with the lads in June. He'll get some proper time with the players for once. We'll have a few of those lads come through, like Annie Moore and Boss Lowell. There are some, don't get me wrong. I know uh, we've had a little bit of disagreement, Connor and I. And sorry, Connor, you know, I, you know, I love you anyway. And, uh, but, you know, there are a lot of quality players coming through. We just need a bit of luck here and make sure that they stay, you know, injury free and they have good situations at the clubs because that, that shit happens. That affects you. And then hopefully you get a camp, you get a couple of decent friendlies. I don't want to play top games. I, I want, uh, bring back the John Delaney um, derby. Oh, man, is it? Is it, oh, man? Just, just somebody that we could just play and just get the confidence up a bit. I, I don't care. Armenia, somebody, I, I don't give a shit. Lithuania. Lithuania or somebody. And then you go in September and whoever you got, you got, and you're going in on a little bit of a high. The team's, you know, has bonded together. You've got other players coming in. And then we have a good crack at it and we see where we're at. And then we go, I, we'll think they do, I think they should do an American tour. No, we're doing that in 2026 anyway. The chief. I know that, but we should, we should go no, there no, no, no. anyway so we can have a look at it before we go there in 2026. <laughs> oh Jesus! My, my <laughs> bank manager will shoot me if I do. Right, let's get to the comments, lads. Yeah, for the seventh <laughs> time. Daryl Carter, uh, home and away. Uh, sorry, home and all safe. Home and all safe, lads. Got the train up to Birmingham and back to the motherland. Uh, great seeing you both. I hope I wasn't too drunk talking to you last night, Martin. Um, great seeing you, Daryl. Sorry, I didn't get to see you uh, for enough, really, or, or anyone. Do apologies. We we were so busy running up to the. Did to I see him last night? No. He wasn't there. Was he was only in the cladder last night? I'm guessing. Yeah. Did you go yeah. back to the cladder last night? No, no you didn't. I didn't go. I went somewhere else. Oh, Jesus, how yeah, you let... don't know that. I, you yeah. could forgive me for not knowing if you come back to the cladder, but you don't drink. <laughs> um. Did you see the cladder, man? We we were like on Saturday. We were in orbit, right? Fucking Sunday, man. We were we were on the way to the moon. It was gone. Mm. You were gone, Martin. You were hammered. No. You. He goes to me, right? Doesn't, doesn't get, he doesn't get drunk. He's responsible. Oh, fucking does. He goes to me last Freshly. night, right? Do you want a pint? I was like, no, no. Come on, I'll I get you a pint. five from the London Irish Centre because I watched the Katie Taylor fight with Ian Hart. And I woke no. up the next day and it's him sending me a video note saying, are we ready for round two? 
<laughs> what yes. was that email? I was brilliant. He actually, I brought uh, obviously my wife and kids come over, Caroline come over, and she done a great job actually at the Irish Centre doing the shop just she there uh, with the girls then did the shop at the Cladder. So thanks and, and for buying stuff for them. I was two girls, so I can tell you, I'm yeah. a better salespeople than you, man. They, they were better than me, yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, he did say he, he helped me out. He went, "Oh, um, I'm really sorry for keeping Martin out till five in the morning." Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, you know, it's Ian Hart. He, he can get away. By the way, Ian Hart, what a lovely fella. Alan Brilliant. Kelly, Legend. lovely, brilliant. Uh, had Vincent, this... great crack as well. He is. Do you know what? Right, and we were talking about characters. The lack of characters, maybe in the Ireland team, uh, the current Ireland team. Martin, we just knew, didn't we? When the three of them sat down together. We just knew walking in there, and I had to go in, and they were just chatting away, having the crack, and I felt like a right wanker going in with the clip clipboard wanker going in just to go through the the run, just to make sure they were. And by the way, they were happy with everything. Um, you know, I was like, ask us anything. And um, basically, like you, you just knew there were three big characters, didn't you? Like they were just great fun story. Ah, oh, Jesus, Bounce yeah, they each other brilliantly and really, really. They good. did. They had a great night. Like they, they really enjoyed it. We're doing a good job of six comments. <laughs> I know, right? Comments. <laughs> uh, Daryl O'Connor also clattering in some spot, and the staff are legends. Is there a risk London Christmas party? Because I'm hooked on that place. Martin? There is. Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, we're hoping to get a guest at that, actually, Dave, but um, I've got, I'm going to work my ass off to do that now. Um, yeah, we have Norm and me actually coming down for that, uh, playing music on the stage. Good man. Working on some guests, uh, 12th of December. Thursday night, Thursday night. But that's it's Christmas period, isn't it? We all go out midweek. It was a school night. But well, yeah, I, was, I just quick. I know you were going on to the comments just in relation to the clutter. Finbar I did speak to him today. Said like, no bother from any Irish fans. There was a couple of lads, you know, had a bit too much and kind of were asked to leave. But they they handled it so well. It's brilliant. Um, but but they were fine the next day. It was just literally look, you've had. Yeah, they came back. They, yeah, they were back in. So. Great. But but um, you know, he said, oh, it's, it's like the the lost and found here today. And I've got loads of stuff in that cellar and. Absolutely brilliant! Like Jesus, well, there's all yeah flags, everything left. And does he have this? And buckets. Does he have seats? <laughs> <laughs> is that that Jesus Christ! What? Well, 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 I hope he got us through the fucking. Uh, I hope he got us through the fucking uh, the security. Sure, I lost me easy telling about bastards in Dublin Airport. Don't want to talk about it. Uh, no, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, twelfth of December, Daryl. If you're still watching us. Sorry, mate. I know we're a bit behind in the comments and we're going to try and fly through and we're an hour behind in the comments. But yeah, 12th of December. Um, this is what we do. That's what Martin does. He organizes it all. And yeah, brilliant, brilliant staff there. Baylor, got to give it to you, Prandy. I doubt I played well, but still nowhere near Ditsy. Yeah. Uh, 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 Connor, Ditsy plays down to eight men. Ditsy plays yesterday. We're winning that 1 0 all day, aren't we? All he would have <laughs> needed was Ditsy, Finazaz, and Andy Morn. That's all we would have needed. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah, the fucking rest of us sit back. Did he, did he with his goal record? Yep. We'll it's get him on the pod. We'll get him on the pod. That'd be a great start. Did he? Martin thinks you're shite. I don't think <laughs> Just sit back. Jamie, we are shite, sadly, but come on, you boys agree. Fair enough. Uh, Robert Jackson, I uh, hate to be negative, lads, but if we lose the playoff in March, it's time. Is it time? For a new manager, I'm sure we'll win though. Uh, Dunphy was calling for a new manager, wasn't he? He was very, yeah. I mean, I I'll be honest with you. From what I've heard, from who I've spoken to, and I'd imagine from who you guys have spoken to, no one's blaming this on the manager, right? There's questions, of course, there's questions, but no one's going out oh, the manager shit, are they? No, no, no right? I'm not anyway. No, I'm no. definitely not. Look, the, the, the ten man thing is a massive factor. It's yeah, crazy. You have to look at it and say, how did the manager set up? As he, what could he have done to affect what went wrong last night? Nothing. He couldn't have. He can't tell Evan Ferguson to give up on the ball. He can't tell yeah. whether it was Liam Scales to not trip Bellingham in the ball and not win the ball, or trip Bellingham not win the ball. So the manager had us set up brilliantly last night. We were set up as good as we've been in years. So you can't call yeah. it for his head. And it, worked, it looked good. It really looked good. And I've been a, from what I've seen of the manager, the way he sets us up, it's it's been good. It makes sense. He just needs. He just needs time. He hasn't had time. I, I know, yes, he's had time in the job, but like England first game, England last game, you know, Greece away, you know, it's been boom, boom, boom. It's just, he just needs a few friendlies. You know, normally get a few friendlies, work out the kinks, who are, and then go from there. Uh, Kai Watkins, uh, we'd like to see more of the youngsters get an opportunity like we saw with Martin and Pesty. Uh, Kevin, in fact, don't date me. Don't what did you me. say? Don't date me. Sounds like, Liam Neeson over there. Um, Kevin Hill, congrats to Risk London on the weekend. Every club needs a Martin. So much work goes into events like that. I have to say, genuinely, Martin, fantastic. Um, 
uh, and I know how hard you worked in the background on that in the build up to it. Because yeah, I tell you, you know how I know Connor because he was a right cranky fucker on the phone to me. He was. Um, he, That's no, a bit rude. Fuck. That's a bit rude. We it was rude. It was very rude. No, I'm just joking. Uh, no, no, no. It's the volatility uh... I can't handle. <laughs> No, no, no. Honestly, like fantastic work put in there, Martin. Yeah, thank and you. Thanks very much, uh, Kevin, as well, for the kind words. Yeah. G- genuinely. And even on the night as well. Like, because cause Martin's not just, you know, he hasn't just organized it. Because you've, you've organized it before that. You've obviously got stuff to do. You've got to make sure everyone's okay, everyone's happy, because you're the one that's brought them there. And you're sorting out tickets. You, we, we, we laugh at the tickets. You're sorting out tickets. You're sorting out buses. You make sure everyone's okay. Like, honest to God, I don't know how you do it. I really don't. Um, so brilliant stuff. Well done, Martin. Kai Watkins. What's that? He's I can hear. Is that you, Connor? No, my, my mic turned off, sir. Can you hear me? I can, but it's shite. Plug it yeah, back right. in. It went off. Can you hear me all right now? Nope. Uh, oh, Jeez, it's amateur. Uh, Kai Watkins. Connor, aren't you shorter than Barry Bannon? No, I'm not. No, but it was. I met Barry Bannon the other day. He was in the Clatter. He was in the Clatter, wasn't he? Yeah. He yeah. must be a fan of the podcast. Must have seen the Five Point Guinnesses and came to see us. Go into your settings and make sure you, you've got the right microphone plugged in. Don't do me. No, I, I don't know why that's happened. But I go on, you just go on ahead. We will. Uh, Kevin, a great win for Scotland tonight, who stay in Group A. Doesn't seem that long ago since we hammered them 3-0. Are Scotland the template we should be copying? That was a great match tonight. I was watching. I had that and the Northern Ireland match on, who threw away two goalie. But they still go through Northern Ireland back in Group B. They won the group. Um, Scotland was great. Did you lads see that? Like, holy shit. They um, they won it with a like, 93rd minute winner, Andy Robinson. I just seen the goals. I didn't, I didn't watch the game. You're back, by the way. You're back. Um, yeah, no, it was fantastic. And they go into a playoff as well to stay in Group A, which is a hell of an achievement. Um, Robert Jackson. <laughs> uh, will Spain try for a coach at Maloney starting it's, weekly from Say it again. A oh, sorry. A choa, sorry. Uh, starting, <laughs> starting weekly for Malaga at 17 is impressive and his goal for under 19s was superb. Superb. That, that was the guy I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, I think I think Spain probably will try for him, but as long as Ireland continue to push him through, I don't think he's which he has. He's an Irish mother, like so. It's not it's not a granny ruler, but uh, obviously these countries will try. Um, but I do. I would say if the under 19s were playing competitively right now, he would be in the under 21s because of how well he's doing playing first team football. Like at that level, can't be ignored. So, but it's just that the 19s have competitive games. He's in the 19s. Fair enough. Old dude, 420. Way too many midfielders in Spain for that, maybe, if he was a defender mm. uh, in response to the previous. Daniel Granahan, was there any upside to the match last night? It felt so disappointing. I was watching a section of the second half live at work, and it was sobering to watch. Yeah, the first half, you know, we, we don't want to go over it again uh, too much, Daniel, but no, the first half was okay. We set up very well. We looked comfortable. You know, we were frustrating the home side. It was great. And then they just fell apart. Uh, just one misplaced pass. Not tracking back, boom, 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 give away a penalty and he fall apart. Hopefully it's not too damaging and he can he can work it out. Daryl O'Connor, I le- nearly lost my voice from building the Royal Navy and then their anthem. Yeah, definitely a blind spot when it comes to Ireland. Um, remember the issues they have with 1916 to 2016 on our shorts. That was an interesting point there. Um, who was it? Was Aidan Fitzmaurice mentioned it? Yeah, he on put it out, yeah. Twitter and goes, Hold on, we you know we had to you, you, you can't have any military um, insignia or anything like that on your shirt because they had the whole thing to poppy, and we got fined for that. But yet they have the military on the pitch, double standards. We got fined for it, didn't we? Yep, yeah, we did, yeah. Because it fell in the an MP in Parliament went, well, FIFA didn't, you know, they done us for the poppy, but they didn't do anything for for the nineteen sixteen, and oh, 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 did they? And then find us, Rah. Oh, yeah. Um, Rob mm-hmm. Duke, HH said he was looking for a bastard. Maybe he needs to be the bastard. Get tougher with the players. HH comes across as another nice guy like Kenny. I always said the next appointment needed to be hard ass. These players might need to be balled out um, of it when needed. Nice chatting with you all in London, by the way. Good man, Rob. Um, I don't know. Does that, does, that doesn't work in modern-day football anymore. I get what he's saying, but it doesn't really work in the modern day, does it? Go on ahead, Brendan. 
no, no. Like, you know, I think that's why he had Malumbi in there last night, though, to, to be the bastard. And he did try to. I mean, Roy King criticised him for the the play acting because um, he does hold his face, doesn't he? But that's football now, and yeah, that's what was happened. Because Harry came shitting himself there because he was going to the ref. It's not a red. It's not a red. You see it on the replay. Um, but yeah, look, back to the point though. Look, yeah, I don't think a manager can be now. You, you, it's it's all now creating this nice environment, and mm. you know. We like we we'll come on to it, Mr. Sure, sure. Um, about like the lack of leaders maybe in the squad. They've got to set that demands themselves, haven't they? Like Roy Keane did do that, without a doubt. Um, as we've heard, uh, the other night at the wonderful Lansdowne Legends show, you know yeah. that they Ian Hart said it was Roy would ping a ball into you, and you had to control it. And it was like, who the hell is this lad? If you didn't, so you know the lads need to step up. And and I. I know there's been a little bit of criticism, you know, thinking that Collins isn't a leader. I think over two games, I think he was brilliant the other night in Dublin. And I mm. thought, I felt for him last night having to kind of go back in there, um, which he we was going to be comfortable with. But it just, he, like, I, I thought he was probably one of our best players over the two I, games. I don't think, I don't think you'd merit, to be honest with you, Rob, and I know what you're saying and I get it, but I don't think you get anywhere with these lads shouting at them because they're very mentally fragile right now. And hopefully that's something that's going to change. And just by the way, why would he shout at them at halftime the other day? They were doing the game ban perfectly. Yeah. It was just saying, probably emphasize and keep doing what you're doing, which they didn't do. Yeah, no. no silly mistakes. And then that happens. Yeah. Several, like two silly mistakes. Uh, Baylor, didn't the Irish team in 2016 not, did he not, did he get fined for having a remembrance piece for the 1916 yeah. Rising and Friendly? That is. True, they did. Kevin O, uh, they made a good point on off the ball today. Ori, the penalty shout. Ferguson doesn't complain. Happened against Greece also. You have to convince the VAR, the VAR like Man City do for every challenge. That is true. And we did we yeah. did cover that earlier on. That is something with Ferguson. He needs to, you know, you need to learn the dark arts. You get a pull. You make them look at the VAR. You make them look at it twice, three times. If you go, meh, do you have a little look? No, that's fine. He's not complaining, sure. They're only human. You have to remember that they are human people using a machine. So, if you're that's watching, what, <laughs> that's what we need. Though a bastard on the bench as well. Like you do need to have yeah. someone who's watched it and going up. Remember, you, you know what make, always makes me laugh. You know the Jose Mourinho, the one where the player the screen. The, yeah, no, and he runs up. Yeah, no, no, the one from a while ago where they get a penalty or something and he realizes that the player should be booked and he runs off out. The, like he goes back. He's got the water, yeah, and then he realizes. Oh shit, yeah, because the coach says to him yeah. and he goes out. But that it, it's influencing it. It's the dark arts, but it's fine margins at this level. And yeah. you have to get everything you can. And it's just even to put it in the fourth official's head or the referee's head that look, you're that's embarrassing that was that you got that decision completely wrong. So the next one, you might get the decision. That's what it's yeah. about. I agree. Now that's that's football. And that is football. And that's the difference between like youth football and you know, this top level, you have coaches that are like that. You have seasoned professionals. You have people that play the game for years and they know the dark arts. And that's, you don't really, I would imagine you don't really learn about that in youth football, but you mm. see it in the professional game, it's another layer. And that's, you know, it's not fair. All's fair in love and war, isn't it? And you have to do it. And that's what, you know, I, I said it before, Evan Ferguson needs to get in that. He's like, he pulled me fucking jersey, right? What's going on? Yeah. And then you plant a debt. If you get it wrong and you're still at him a half time, you plant that seed of doubt. Down. Yeah. Harry Kane did it, didn't he? Oh, it's not red, it's not red, it's not yeah, red. Yeah. You know, they'll do it. Yeah, yeah. You have to do yeah. it. You're at a disadvantage if you don't do it. I'm sorry, that's just a modern game. That's just football, actually. It's even been... Carl, Carl Walker grabbing him up, though, lifting up uh, Malumbi after that. You know, like, yeah. that, 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 well, that, that was Kane, well. wasn't it? That was Kane, wasn't it? Yeah. He did that. Yeah, Kane threw him on the floor. Yeah. And then he's on the floor, and he's playing an injury a little bit, but then he comes and grabs him. Smiling, so... actually. And lifts him up like is it King King said it on the TV like oh he's that's embarrassing that but he goes oh he's lifted him up there like a vape, like a child yeah but like there's, there's... but you want lads coming in then and going what the fuck no but that, like, Malumbi did the right thing there Malumbi got oh yeah without that yeah. did yeah because look it's happened like fuck fuck the whole we're Ireland we don't do that bollocks to that yeah yeah fuck that that's like it. yeah fuck that you go to yeah. Greece they do it you go to like Portugal Spain they do it. You know, we're fucking. How many games have we lost because of that? How many points have we dropped? How many camp, How many times have we cost ourselves we hard luck stories? Yeah, we can't have hard yeah. luck stories of this and that. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to be fucking harder. You need to be more savage, and you need to be in the referee's fucking ear all the time. Daryl O'Connor. Um, also shout out to. I love how we're getting all the great. It's like Daryl O'Connor. Uh, also shout out to David Collins coming up to us after the game with his hands up. 
He done the same in Athens last year. Why isn't the rest of them doing that? They all should be putting their hands up. I, I don't like that. that. I know what you're saying as well. I don't really like that. Do better on the fucking pitch. How about you don't collapse? You know, how about you don't concede like three goals in five minutes? Maybe maybe do that. You know, it's like when Carrius did it, didn't he? I'm sure you you two were loving it when he went over to the to the fan, you know, apologizing when he made a complete bollocks in the Champions League final. Like I, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Brilliant. But do you know what I mean? Like I, I I'm not really into that. You know, when you know when you go on social media, I'll oh, sorry about that. No, fuck off. We got sorry, that's just all that shite, yeah. Yeah, that's just my take. What do you reckon? What do you reckon, Connor? You're you're a whippersnapper. Is that what all the kids do? Do you like that? I don't really care what to do. Like whether they clap <laughs> the fans, whether they say sorry. They probably are you saying sorry, but I don't really care what to do. We lost five nil. Yeah, see, you know? see, but, see. Now, but I do respect someone. You can tell with Collins when he came onto the TV, did his interview after. You can tell. It generally, it generally hurt him Man. last night. That result did hurt him, and oh, he. Yeah. As captain, he is he feels that burden of being the captain of Ireland. And I know people are saying captain this uh, maybe he's not captain material, but you can tell this captaincy means so much to him and I am happy for him to be our captain going forward. But I don't the apologizing thing, I'd rather oh, he yeah. does it in in the interview as yeah. it was coming out of his mouth than going over and saying to the fans, but yeah. But you know what I want to, I like I, I get it. I know I'm not saying it doesn't hurt him, right? I, I know it does and I imagine it doesn't, you know, they're good lads, but you know, it should be hurting you. It should be hurting you. That should be hurting you. Like Jesus, lose five nil to anyone, especially Wembley at home, you know, England, Wembley, five nil. Holy Christ, that should be hurting. Um, I'd want an angry action. I hope they tear into each other. That's probably one um where a bit of old school mentality comes in when a manager goes, Right, lads. I'm gonna. Our coaching staff is gonna go outside for half an hour, and you fucking tear into each other. You just, or fifth, maybe fifteen minutes, and have a go. That and fucking wouldn't happen in that group. No, it wouldn't. But that that's what I'd like to see. Like, like you know, like Liam Scales to have his hands up when he go, look, lads, you know, what can I do? Yeah. I mean, the other thing to look back on, it's a two set pieces we conceded from. Right, which yeah. real soft. I mean, I don't even Bar didn't even look well, they did look a little bit, didn't they? The offside. It was that was offside, was it not? Gallagher? Uh no, I don't think it was what, just his hand. So what's it gotta be? Yeah, uh, bar to your body you can score with. Yeah, you can score with it. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. what but like that was again though, you have to make a bigger thing of that. But that was soft. Um and you know, are they that's what that's what they've got to be angry at. That that kind of yeah. crap, crap on the pitch, having to go there, but that's yeah sort of like that's they sort of you know maybe maybe take him on a Roy Keane oh you know his book the second half is it where um he takes the Ipswich team out to the uh is it to the army goes out to the army base yeah. and you wake him up with smoke grenades in the morning <laughs> you know maybe a bit of that like sorting out they do need a camp I think they need a camp together they need to bond together you know, yeah you have to build a camaraderie like they're, they're look they're good lads don't get me wrong they are good lads and they seem to come across well most of them anyway, um, you just need to, it's just mental weakness. You know, they're, they're good players. They are yeah. good players. Uh, you know, they do well at their clubs. Most of them do well at their clubs. It's just confidence breeds confidence and and bad, co- no confidence breeds no confidence, you know, or lack of confidence. Anyway, we'll move it on. Jason, play your best players helping. Huh? Play, play your best players helps. True. Jason Fitzsimmons, good to see you, Jason. Sorry I didn't get to, um, I keep saying this a lot, there's so many people that I wanted to see and did not get a chance to see anybody because it was just it was just so busy. But Jason, massive fan of the pod, good to see you too, pal. T- thoughts on the Smodics penalty shout? Me personally, I didn't think it was a penalty. There's contact, but... It no, I don't think so either. It is It is a question, but I don't think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in last night's game. Yeah, no, it was, no, just like, no, it wasn't definitely not a penalty. But like, no, great to see Jason as well. Really good score. Good lad, yeah. Good to see him. Yeah. yeah he's a good lad. Uh, Baylor, gotta love all the Smolich chants. What a player to represent the country on and off the pitch. I do like Smolich. Um, mm-hmm. Although he was annoying. Sorry. No, go ahead. No. I was going to say he was annoying me in the first half a little bit. In the, in the beginning, you know, he, he, he had a few ropey ones, didn't he? He was trying to do the turns and then uh, he lost it. But he got into it, didn't he? When he had the. Mm-hmm. When he had the Very uh, good. Yeah. It'd be a question, really, of Kenny, that criminal. Yeah. Not really. really. Exactly. I haven't no. really done that much in an Ireland shirt yet. Yeah, I do like him. He's a great player, but the other no, I think it, yeah, but it's still it's just too slow getting him involved. Like that's that's not yeah. good. Yeah, agreed. Cheap heat, 
Productions podcast. I love that phrase, GP. Sending off changed uh, the game. We just need to erase this bad memory and move on. Darla Connor. Some of us didn't even realize the scales got the first yellow. Uh, so for the Peno and him walking off, we were like, Chris Kamara. I seen him going off, but I, I thought they were bringing the sub on. <laughs> it is amazing. When you're at the game, you do miss so much. You, you do miss this, don't you? Jason Simmons, Festy, surely undroppable when like, Benny is back. Yeah. Well, Festy, or Benny won't be back for so long. Like, it'll be the June window, possibly, if even. Like, he probably won't play the rest of the season. It's like, will Ipswich release him to go play in June? I highly doubt it. So it'll probably be September. So we have a long time to see how Festy does from then to now. Yeah. Now to then. John O'Sullivan. Hi, Connor. Martin. David. As a Shamrock Rovers fan, so I've already heard that. No, I'm just joking. Um, I would like to see Neil Ferrugia getting called up in March. Um, if you know, you know, Connor. Neil Ferrugia. What? I, I, I don't know what I, I don't know what, I don't know what he's saying, Connor. Do, do, no, do, no, you, you've, you've never had problems with Neil Ferrugia, have you? I never have any problems. I'm the excellence of elocution. <clears throat> but he, he is a brilliant player, but he probably has to do more. A wee bit more yeah. to get in the Ireland squad. Uh, Nick says from from YouTube, uh, England had no shots on target until the red card. Awful class, but would not have happened against 11 men. Also, getting a centre-half sent off is far worse than other positions. That is true. You kind of want a forward sent off, don't you? Like, you know, and you can, you just pack the midfield and the defence and, you know, you might get an out ball somewhere. But, uh, yeah, fair point. Nick again. Uh, uh, fuck Slovakia are actually good. Well, the 41st <laughs> in the world. I think it's a bit of a free-for-all when you're in the kind of 40 to 60 mark, isn't it? Uh, Graham Tucker, how you doing, Graham? Confidence when faced with adversity is shot. Yep, too many negative results under Kenny did the damage with mostly a young team. Okay. Uh, I think HH will get them there, but will take longer than we think. What do you think, lads? You know, Without getting too bogged down, and I don't see Dave McGuinness yet. <laughs> he might show up later on. Very quickly, uh, do, do, do you think there's some credence in that? That maybe these young players are a bit scared over the poor results on the Kenny? Mm, there is a bit of that. There's a bit. No, there is a bit of that. Um, but I'm, yeah, like we, we've got to move on. I think they've got to kind of grow up as well. And I think get that bond. I think, I, like, I know we've said it a few times now. I think it's really, really important. Um, this, this, uh, that in March window and then the a June camp is, is going to be critical for the World Cup qualifier campaign yeah what about you uh, not really. Connor? no not really because a lot there is a good few of them players are new face the squad like because i don't like the likes of like, Kelleher pretty much is i know he's been in the squad a long time but never really played scales is pretty much a fresh and off face uh who else manning was never really he was a couple of times with kenny the likes of smodix ferguson festy mikey johnston a lot of them through the bat the really bad times we had other kenny when what when we drew at Bulgaria and we lost to was it who did we lose at home to uh, Luxembourg? Mm. There were a lot of them lads are gone from the squad. I just think it was a squad that was developing that got some of the hardest groups like Holland, France, and Greece with a very young Ireland squad that hadn't a lot of inexperienced players. I do think there was obviously losing games like that does have an effect on you, but I don't think it's a this squad is totally shot and a lot of these lads are fresh to the international scene. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a case like, oh, Kenny's poisoned them or anything like that. What I think it is, is that it's been a bit of that, um, you know, the results. And, you know, Kenny, in, in our opinion, well, in my opinion anyway, lost the plot, I think, November, uh, the year before, you know, that window in Malta. I, that's when I knew. I thought, nah, I, li- I like Stephen Kenny. He's a gentleman. But I thought, nah, you've, you, it's over. It's done. Well, he, didn't, he had a chance to bring in fresh face for two nothing friendlies, really. And he just picked an experienced squad. I think there was a bit of that, and the group was very. We were battered in that group as well. We were absolutely smashed in that group. Uh, weren't very impressive against Gibraltar either. And then I think just the timing of the new manager coming in, he hasn't had a great chance to experiment with with uh, friendlies to galvanise the group. He hasn't had a summer camp with them. So I do agree um, with what he says in the end there as well. Uh, HH will get them there, but it will take longer than we think. And I think that's absolutely fair. They will get there. I, I do feel they will get there. We just need a little bit of luck, really. Yeah. Alfie Connolly, uh, hi, Martin, David and Connor. Great atmosphere of the game Sunday before and throughout the game. A good first half to Fenua and then a tough second half, but a great atmosphere from all of us. Good man, Alfie. Um, Shane Martin, comment Duffy Egan Brady. That's our back four if we can get the fit. Um, 
maybe Collins in midfield. We have no leaders. Collins is not the captain. Do you know what? Probably could you could probably actually do it. And we've kind of written them off a little bit here on the pot, especially you, Martin. But you know, Shane Duffy, a concentrating, concentrated Shane Duffy, a focused Shane Duffy, and in, in that you know, someone like him, a big character like that. Do you maybe think the team is missing someone like that? No, and, and I'll be quite. Fair enough. Well said, <laughs> no, 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 well no, no, no. I just, I think, you know, it, we probably maybe from aerial threat. I mean, look, Mark McGuinness's debut wasn't it last night. Yeah, he was brilliant. Yeah, he was excellent, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. And and you know, he's going to be one that need him playing now. Um, he was an aerial threat. I I told everyone one nil McGuinness was my prediction. Um, is it because he's from yeah, London or anything yeah. like that? Is it? No, it's not. Um, but that was why I uh, I thought it just br- br- from a betting perspective, <laughs> it was good value. I thought six six to one. <laughs> And uh, so I thought you got to do it, uh, but yeah, we just didn't have any threat from set pieces that we that we actually executed well. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, that's what Duffy did bring and probably organising at the back a, a bit of that because um, McGuinness is I think caught for maybe the Gallagher one. He could have done a bit better. He was a bit ball watching yeah. at that one. Um, but, but yeah, still at that point, that, but, it, yeah, yeah. These, this these four here. Um, uh, but by the way, on that on them four, the probably the saddest one of all is John Egan because. He was brilliant for Ireland for a couple of years, and Stephen Kenny was. I remember calling him a Champions League level centre back. Like he, he was brilliant, and I remember he scored an unbelievable header against Portugal away. It wasn't just defensively; he would offer a lot in the opposition mm-hmm. box. So it's sad to see how that injury at Sheffield United last season has, like, he isn't, uh, he isn't getting any minutes at Burnley. Actually, CJ Egan Riley, who's played for Ireland before, and that's probably what will probably end up declaring for Ireland again, is playing over him at centre half for Burnley. So. It's just sad to see Egan because he seems a lovely fellow as well. Like he was even putting out posts the other day after the Finland match, congratulating the lads. So you'd hope he could one day get back in the Ireland team, but it's probably hard to see. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Forbes, is Connor on any other social media platforms to follow? I'm off Twitter. Too many twatters. No, Facebook. No, I'm not. No, yeah, no, I'm on Instagram and Facebook with Rep Tracker. Uh, I haven't joined Blue Sky as of yet, anyway, because I don't know if people will. As we've seen, oh, and I'm on TikTok as well at Rep Tracker, but it's not really posting information as videos, clips. But when uh, I uh, haven't joined Blue Sky as of yet, because as we've seen with a lot of social media apps in the past, people will join it for two weeks and then they'll decide, oh, we'll just go back to the tried and tested. So I will Fair do enough. it. Fair enough. Avi Connelly uh, on our 21s. It was great to see good friend Tommy Lonergan play and back playing for our, our 21s. You know yourself, Connor. He's a good player and doing well at Fleetwood. Yeah, yes, he's good. His movement was very good the other day. He was unlucky a couple of times in front of goal, but his movement was very nice. Glenn Forbes, if we lose the playoff, maybe to uh, maybe so five nil wins, via Liechtenstein will help our confidence. Um, GP Productions podcast. Think we need to build our team around Sammy. Certainly up front. Mayo GAA. How you doing, Mayo GAA? Uh, Ryan Kelleher is to join Aberdeen FC from Kerry FC. Mm, that's some breaking transfer news. I didn't know that. There you go. There you go, Mayo FC. You knew something that Connor didn't. Doesn't happen often. John O'Sullivan, how was Connor in the Clatter Ring and the Irish Centre, Dave and Martin? He was all right. Just had his lemonade and his, pack, his red lemonade and packet of crisps. That's that's yeah. what we were built on, Martin, wasn't it? That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Pack, no, it wasn't crisps, it was bacon fries. Bacon. Oh, God, I do love bacon fries. They are amazing. You're not in the Clatter, was there? It would have been, wouldn't it? They know we have the Irish stuff there. Oh, I'll tell you what, I had a crack in. Full Irish breakfast. Oh, Sunday morning. Amazing. I did a lovely chicken curry recommended by Ian Hart. It was gorgeous. Mm. Yep. There you go. Great food at the Clattering. I'm getting hungry thinking about that. Uh, Glenn Forbes, it's a pity Ten Hag still isn't in charge of United. Would have signed the whole Irish team after that 5 0 defeat. Um, Connor, Mac- Connor McAvoy, my goat. Luke's the goat. He is the goat. Oh, you got a bit of a bromance here. Was he one of those lads yeah. that we met? or No, no, he wasn't there, but he does good work on social media. He does good work. Fair enough. McConnell, I appreciate the great coverage as always over the window, lads. Thank you, McConnell. Uh, the pod is now mainstay, pre and post games, getting bigger each winner to keep the great work. Thank you very much. A team effort. And uh, yeah, uh, we had a great 2024. We're going to have a fucking even better 2025. We've got mm-hmm. some exciting stuff coming uh, down the pipe. John O'Sullivan. Hi, Martin. Did you sing her on the V and all the family? Yes, did we you? did. And uh, for those of you that know me and know my son, Kean, when he was four, we went to the Euros. It went viral, him singing on my shoulders. Sings it very, very passionately. And uh, he was loving the Rebel songs in um, Cladder Ring as well. Um, 
and I actually got his tick, uh, tickets to two of his teachers, um, Ronan and Rory. I won't give their surnames, but they um, they were in front that of us. That is not Kean, well. by the way. That's no, I know, but in, I know, but that's uh, them in the crowd. Fuck's yeah. sakes, lads. Um, but absolutely, yeah, they're, they're they're good lads, and they they enjoyed it, and yeah, they, they know that he loves the rebel stuff and the Irish history thing at school. So yeah, his Irish history teacher, well, his history teacher, who he talks Irish history too, because they don't teach it in the English national curriculum. They do have the Irish proclamation up on the wall in the classroom, which oh. I fair play to Ooh. them doing that. Very good. I'm going to report that to Ofcom. Uh, <laughs> or not, it's Ofsted, isn't it? It's Ofsted. Ofsted. Um, yeah, Glenn Forbes, give it two years. Tuka will have fallen out with everyone. England will be a mess again, and Halgrimson will be leading us to two to one nil wins. I, I agree. I can see that. I can genuinely see that happening. And just my thoughts on that is that I think international coaching is different now it's moved on it's it's its own vocabulary it's its own vocation and it's a specialist vocation and i think carsley the style of manager carsley is that's the future and i think getting someone like Tuchel, it's a name really they want a big name they've gone away from their own thing that brought them success to a degree considering uh, the great england teams they've had that you know players i should say group of players that never could perform as a team so i think that will Will happen, John O'Sullivan. No way, Callum O'Dowd is hanging around the veen. Oof, oof, oof. Glenn Forbes, I think we need to take into account the penalty decision not given last night. It was a shocker. Great first half. Keith McCormick, there's a lot coming. Th- there's not a lot coming through, unfortunately. That's not correct. That's yeah. a lie. There's loads coming through. It's just as the thing is, you can have loads coming through. It's just how to develop in men's football, and it's just can be a flip of a coin. At times, it could just be a little bit of luck, but. They say there's not a lot coming through is wrong. Yeah, um, that that is true, uh, and it's a step up from underage football to a uh, professional level. There's there's so many layers to profession to the professional game to the top to the top level, and we always have great players coming through the youth uh, the youth teams. We always have good youth. Te- We've always had good youth teams actually. Well, we, we did. Have. There was a there was a dry spell there before probably up four five four five no years king. ago. No king. <laughs> There was a dry spell of players coming through. Even when when you look at the likes of when Declan Rice was playing underage with Ireland, the teams he would have played on, just just to make an example, wouldn't have been near as good as what they are. Yeah, at the moment, yeah. that that Kenny team, the under twenty one team, was fantastic. I remember. Yeah, it was and just just unfortunate timing. But yeah, it's it's that it's that leap, isn't it? It's that you know, yeah. it's very easy to fall through the cracks. Sometimes it's a chasm for for a few. Daryl O'Connor, 2024 window is playoff in March. Two friendlies in June and a World Cup qualifying campaign starts in September. I'm led to believe we can only get teams that's also in March playoffs as a World Cup group, as them teams will have to be in a four-team group too, so we can't get England, for example. We did say that earlier on, but thank you, Daryl, for uh, for uh, keeping us abreast of the situation. My good man, Keith McCormick, uh, there's not a lot... Oh, same comment. Glenn Forbes, don't worry, we'll qualify for the World Cup in the US. Hopefully I'll have... Um, the tunnel dug to Canada by then, and you can escape. I don't imagine that's going to be a Donald Trump uh, well, comment. The thing is, we have to be at the World Cup in 2026. You can't have all the Irish heritage in USA and not have us at it. It's just written in the stars. We'll be there. I love your optimism. Uh, two teams we'll ranked there. above us. We're third seed and one below us for the World Cup qualifying group. Um, World Cup draw is December. Friday the thir- 13th actually holy shit I never thought of that uh, it's normally a good day for me Friday the 13th it's just the way I am uh, I was both nights Connor but didn't see you says Daryl only two uh, thirds of the Lansdowne Roar mm. so you haven't met Connor there you go Jim Barry you know it was a rough window when Martin is talking about the fans getting drunk that's every window yeah no I think that's why I think as he means it's like it's a given that fans get drunk so it's right, a bad yeah. thing. What's the talking point? Uh, but no, well, I mean, Martin organized <laughs> the, the debauchery like that. That's what we're talking yeah. about. He organized it. And by the way, Martin, I'll say it again. Fabulous job and brilliant, brilliant few like nights. I don't father, drink. Martin. Mm-hmm. I'm like a proud father for you. <laughs> Very proud. Um, Poddy Lahart. Lahart? Lahart, am I saying that correctly? Lahart, yeah. Hard. Who would you like in the league CB playoff? Um, I think we said Kosovo, didn't we? Oh, yeah, no. just for the trip. Just for the trip, mm. yeah. <laughs> just for the trip, we hope. And then Martin will come back saying, fucking hey, Kosovo. Uh, John O'Sullivan, uh, there'd be no booing in the British Armed Forces in Kosovo, I can tell you. Mm. Uh, John O'Sullivan, how was the night out in London, Connor, after the match yesterday? 
So I didn't really have a night out yesterday. Like had not enough light like last night. Young kids, these young kids can't do it. Yeah. No, they can't do there it. There wasn't many people that was a bit depressed. I was a bit depressed after the match last night as I got a few messages asking me why was I so angry after this match. <laughs> but no. <laughs> uh, I was just more angry at the English fans, how bad they were, but no, uh, I didn't really have a night out after the match yesterday. It was more Friday than Saturday. Jim Bear, until the team gets uh, some speed and skill in midfield, we will struggle. John Sullivan, they should never have brought the British military out. They knew what they were doing with bringing them out. Just don't get it. I don't know if it's a purpose thing. I know, I, 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 look, I've lived here for a long time. I don't know if it's, if, if it's a thing on purpose. I just think it's just, it's a blind spot. I just, it's a strange one. I was talking to, as I said, I was chatting to my sister about it and she goes, yeah, it, I don't know. It's, it's a weird one. Maybe they do know. I, I don't, fuck it, I don't know. Uh, it, just really careless. Um, from them, by the way, David H. We looked decent against England first half. The ref was awful, and we had and had we got that penalty, it would have been a different game. McGuinness looked good, and Collins as number six. H. H. Needs a few friendlies. Absolutely, it's exactly what we're all on the same page there, David. Jim Bear, lads, also enjoy podcasts and start of summer as a distraction. Lost my mum, who was born in Sligo, then my job. Oh Jesus Christ! Uh, back to work now, and we contribute to both sides to buy you a lunch. Good man, Jim. Lunch, Jim. Very sorry to hear that, and we hope you do much better, mate. Um, yeah, I think he's uh, one of our followers from uh, from America. Actually, I think he he's a constant. Uh, he's always engagement rep tracker, so he's a he's a good fan. Good man, yeah. Jim, uh, and we're glad to hear you. You sound like you're you're in a better place now, and and things are looking up a bit. And uh, yeah, man, just really sorry about that. These things happen. Fucking, they get kicking the bollocks, and then you try to get back up from that. You get a kick in the face, but. Uh, Hopefully you're doing much better, Jim. I just want to come in on that one, Dave, because yeah, it's a, it's a key thing. This like we, we we love doing the podcast. We we like we say it, it's by the fans for the fans, and it's brilliant. As I said, you got um coming up to us at the games and in the pub and on the coaches and stuff, saying I enjoy it, whatever. And we love the interaction, of course. But like I, I think it really is important as well. You know, we know a lot of fans. You see them traveling to games. We, we obviously see each other at games, but we don't ever know everyone's backstory. And I was speaking to a few lads yesterday, and one lad who came to the game I hadn't seen for quite a while, actually, and he said that he had a real kind of tough couple of years, but he really wanted to go to this game because it was in London. And um, I buy, and I said to him, um, you know, he's a real, real proud member of the London club, and I, I said, like, it's really important, like, to, you, you know, you do that. And also, if he ever wants to reach out to us or me as Risk London, but also anyone here on the show... We love interacting with people on Twitter and Facebook and everything like that. So just do, don't be afraid to reach out to us and we'll engage and ask us questions. That's why we do this as well. I think it's really important. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and listen, I, I get it. I, I've had rough patches and I've listened to podcasts, not, not our, by the way, but like I've listened to other podcasts and, you know, and I get it. You need a distraction, you know, and just, mm. it, it's very important. And you know what? Like genuinely, that's, that, that, that makes it all worthwhile. When you know you hear people like genuinely when you say like oh, I don't love hearing it and it really makes it worthwhile because going to the games it can be quite tough, lads. You know when you're traveling all over the place and it's 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 an accurate, but you know you keep going and I love it. I do enjoy it, um, even when Dublin Airport take my easy town bar. <laughs> Let it go. Uh, no, no, I will actually. I've actually found a cheaper one for twenty quid on Amazon. So oh, fuck you, at Dublin Airport. Um. <laughs> I hope they're not watching this. Actually, guarantee you, I'm going to get a rubber glove. <laughs> oh, oh, right over the air. <laughs> but, no, uh, n- well, no, uh, yeah, I agree. Next anyway, comment. Jim, yeah, next comment, Jim. I hope you're doing well, mate, and uh, hang in there, pal. Glenn Forbes, great job, Lance. Connor's a great addition. Oh, I don't know about that now. Glenn. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah I don't know about that. Yeah, be honest, that was a ridiculous comment. comment. No, Glenn, that was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for your hard work and good chat, good man, Glenn. No, no. Uh, He's all right. Sometimes. No, no. It's good. Big things coming next year as well. Uh, fantastic. Darren Hartnett. Uh, hi, lads. Hope you're keeping well. Thanks for the chats and podcasts. I look forward to them. Come on, Bows. And of course, come on, you boys in green. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Darren continues. Uh, Fer- Ferugia. Ferugia uh, is a good player, <laughs> but the man's made of glass. <laughs> I'd say I'm just going to say Ferugia. Anytime he comes on, fuck it. I'll give the people what they want. Jimmy Shell, fantastic as usual, and well done on the London celebrations this weekend. Thank you, Jimmy. 
brilliant again for Martin. Uh, looked class just on the draw of the World Cup. Uh, are we second or third seeds for it? Third, aren't we? Third, yeah, third. Yeah. yeah. So we can get Greece as our second seed, which will be lovely to get them no. again. No, no, please. No, I don't want to go to wheels. assets. Give us wheels and then we can beat wheels again and show them what, why we're so much better than them and then we'll win the playoff this time. I actually do want to go to, I'd love to go to Principality. It's, no, it's Principality's Millennium Stadium. Uh, they play in the Cardiff City Stadium, yeah, there, don't they? Yeah. 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 yeah, I've been to uh, the Millennium Stadium. Great ground. Uh, I went to see you too there, of course. Great concert, actually, that one. That one was. That's another I mean, one of sending off a game. Wales. I'm just thinking, remember we were talking about when players. Uh, no, no, we said it. We actually we did say it. McLean. Yeah. Say Wales. I was at McLean. James McLean. Yeah, wakey, home wakey. And John Covid. I know the yeah. away game. Nobody away game as well. Who was remember Jeff done the part, real short pass? Oh, the four one was oh. it? No, no, sorry, uh, not the four one. One nil. Is it? Lockdown in game. Wales. Yeah, they beat us in yeah. both games, didn't they? Home and away. score free kick. Jack, Jack Byrne gave the ball away, did he? Yes. And yes, Jeff got sent off. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah, Jack Brown. Yeah, good stuff. What was that? Uh, Daryl O'Connor. I really don't want to be out of the World Cup after two games. Every campaign since our Euro twenty twenty qualifiers, the twenty nineteen we've been done after the first two games, and the rest are really nothing games. Graham Tucker, Connor, how would you rate our youth development now in comparison to countries like Scotland, Wales, etc.? A lot better. Our talent at that level is uh, not being biased. If you compare talent at underage Ireland compared to Scotland and Wales, the Ireland is my, it's not miles ahead, but the talent wise is a lot stronger. There you go. No bias there, I'm sure. Shane Brown, never. God bless you. Sorry. No, no, I said never. I'm never oh. biased. No, no, not at all. Uh, Shane Brown, God bless you guys. It's Thanksgiving over here next week, and I'm thankful for this outstanding podcast. Yesterday was shit. Today is better. Onwards and upwards. Thank you very much, and we really appreciate that, Shane. And God bless you as well. You're a great supporter of the podcast, and thank you very much. And we really do appreciate it. And happy Thanksgiving to all of our American listeners over there. Um, I hope you guys are safe. I think, Shane, you were in um, the hurricane in Florida as well. We've got a few listeners from Florida, and we hope you guys are okay from that. Daniel Mullen, Heimer is definitely the man to get us uh, close to qualifying for the World Cup and possibly qualifying for Euro 2028. We need to build a team around one or two players. Yep, they have Baker Fries in the cloud, says Darren. <laughs> There you go. Yes. <laughs> I do love me how bacon fries. Stephen Ring, evening lads. Good man, Stephen. I uh, hope you had a great weekend. We did. Don't know if you touched on it, but it was anything said about the English fans throwing stuff down on the fans from the first minute. I, Martin? I didn't know of any of that. All I seen was some paper aeroplanes being thrown down onto yeah, the. Uh, is... And it landed on the pitch, which is usually happens at Wembley because they're normally so bored and quiet in their library. Yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah. Fair did enough. anyone buy a match program? I did. Did you not you get one? one? No, I didn't know. I will. I, I'll get it online. Don't worry. That's fine. No, I've got two. There's nothing really, probably not worth reading anyway. Cause it's didn't, not didn't as good as the home, home lands down road. No, ones. no, well, no, of course not. Although I did, I did like their five players to watch. Um, the Wembley one. It's almost like they just looked at Rep Tracker and say knew the bet who Rep Tracker <laughs> likes. Put Finn his ass in it. Must be a Rep Tracker fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know it was kind of funny. We were we were worried because they gave you allocated seating because you know you know when you go away like you don't really know what you've got. You don't know if the Wi-Fi is going to work. You don't know. You know shit happens, right? Mm. And uh, actually, there was a guy, and I don't know if he's watching. Uh, I, I actually never caught the lad's name, but Connor was sitting in his seat, and we were going to do the whole look. You don't mind, and he was actually. He was a lovely fella, wasn't he, from the FBI? Don't know his name. And he, he took your seat, Connor. It's only like about four seats down the way, yeah, but he let, he let us do. So if you are watching, by the way, thank you for that. He let us kind of sit together and do the podcast. Um, but yet again, the wife, ah, uh, superb. The only shit thing was, Martin, tiny little screens. Very 2010. Yeah. Very 2010. And the fact um, it was Wembley. And the fact. Um, God. Jimmy Shell, did you see that under 19s goal uh, today from young Aaron? Fantastic. First touch and goal into the top corner. Yes, my mate. Your mate. Uh, Jimmy Shell, uh, Stephen Ring, remember the 1985 match and English fans were throwing coins down on the Irish behind the goal and some Irish fans were picking up the coins. <laughs> that happened in 91 as well. I bet it did, yeah. Uh, very different economic times. If that was the other way around now, considering the state of this country, you know, they'd be, the English fans would probably pick it up the coins now, wouldn't they? <laughs> wow. Oh. It's true. Fucking £22 billion. No, what was it? 40, where from? 
Went from a twenty-two billion pound black hole, Martin, to now a forty billion pound black hole, and there's Ireland, one of the one of the, ca- one of the most cash cash rich countries in the, in Europe right now, has more money than sense. When you're spending a million quid on a security office at uh, Leinster House, mm-hmm. that's when you know the good times are back. And was it a quarter of a million on a fucking uh, on a bike shed? Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. Glenn Forbes, no one had the headline, Ballon Smasher Till Iron Loss, it's scales. What happened to journalism? Um, no. didn't, didn't even show the fucking penalty claim, actually, on the highlights. Jason Fitzsimmons, great to see you all over the weekend, lads. Dreading 5 a.m. alarm to head to Luton Airport in the morning. Oh, God, man. Jason, get to bed, for the love of God. And Daryl Connor, the last comment of the night. Might, oh, actually, we've got another one there from Stephen Ring. Uh, Daryl Connor might give the El Risk loan and Christmas party support. If not, I'll see you, lads, in Costco in March. Uh, really good weekend, minus the football up there, but one of the best away trips, if not the best. Good man, Daryl. And come see us in December. Absolutely. And it was. It was a great weekend. And well done, Martin. Friend the gas again for organising that. Uh, Stephen Ring, there was food, coins, and I think a lighter thrown at our section. Stewards were just looking at it and doing nothing. A few lads reported to the cops, and still it never stopped. And Stephen Ring says 330 grand, Jesus, uh, on that bike shed. And folks, that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you so much. We've gone a bit over, but you know what? We enjoy doing it. Um, before you do, before we go, Dave, go. Is your play, can we just, just to, we can't leave it on £330 bike shed comment. Not that we don't need more comments, but still, I'm just saying, but, but no, just to kind of finalise the, the, the window. What was, who was your standout player for us? Um, Honestly, probably Keller for the penalty save. Yeah. Look Connor. at that! Looks like someone's pissed in your well, chip. Yeah, well. I mean, look. If, if think, thinking about that though, you know, if it was one all that game, you know, it's a, bit of a yeah. Kind of oh, well, of for, first of all, was, my prediction would have been correct for a start. Oh, we were saying that to you the other night, but you it wasn't to, correct. You wanted, to, you wanted him to score the penalty. You're the only one to was just yeah. saying you could do it. <laughs> no, if I had ever had a bet on, if I had a bet on, maybe if it was like you might would have bet on it. No, no, no. I never bet against Ireland. Although one one. Uh, draw. I I made a fortune. I was at Richard Dunn and one one Ireland. I used to make an absolute fucking fortune on that during the trap era. Go on, come on, Connor. You're you're uh-huh. you're, you're laughing at us. We say Keller. Who do you say? I oh, know I've got Bestie. Bestie I'm sure. <laughs> no, nah, but no, nah, but uh, actually, Andy Moran for that thirty minute display against England. Oh, he's just shown he's better than everyone else, and that we has to play. We just it's only Bestie for that forty five minutes. Yeah, Andy Moran, Collins for one game. Odada is an outside shout, and I'm not going to like to hear that, Mr. Dunn. But Odada actually was solid. Was probably one of the more, over the two games, he was probably one of the most consistent. Yeah. Uh, but Andy Moore. Andy Moore, well, he came, he came on and uh, he played 30, yeah. 30 minutes. No. Oh, he actually, Who got yeah. one of the match on RTE? Uh, Nathan Collins. Yeah, he should have got of course, it the other night. Ray Houghton gave it to him. Great commentary, what? as per usual. When, when did that become a thing, lads? When did that become a thing? Because I remember it used to get, um, it used like they used to be fair, didn't they? It used to give the man of the match to to the to the winning team sometimes if we played really bad. Like I I know I remember I was watching back the Nicosia game the five two, and Brian Kerr giving Aidan McGeady the man of the match. So that's obviously a sponsor thing. When did that become a thing? About twenty years ago, was it? Or it is a kind of sponsor thing, isn't it? Like this, the the Waterford Crystal or whatever it is, the FAI do, isn't it? And Gotta stop doing away to the player, but yeah, I mean, if you lose five nil, I didn't see though. I didn't see Collins collect an award. Did he? He might not. Did, but I don't know. No, they didn't do. They don't do that at the away games. I don't. Well, sometimes you do present it, but I probably wasn't done in the. Yeah, you. In the, just, uh, so I did you see the other week. Right actually, off. I did see a player for Stockport. I think they lost four or five one a couple of weeks ago. And he smiled in the photo when he was getting fierce oh, abuse yeah. because of it. And he replied, quote tweeted, saying, I asked not to accept the award, not want to do the interview or get the picture, but I was told I had to do it for sponsorship reasons. And I always smile in photos. So that's why. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's I don't have a problem with that. No, no. I mean, do you remember Connor Salmon uh, got a pizza? I would. Papa John's trophy. Did you got see him? He was oh. actually, he was the biggest surprise. I seen him in the crowd yeah. yesterday. How was he? Jason, yeah. Jason Knight was there because they were all like, I think it was like families and probably. Whoever got tickets off, players were down in the section below us, and I seen Connor Salmon. I, well, he wasn't one I expected to see in Wembley yesterday. Did you see Robbie? He was up. He up was up, up, up in, 
yeah. on the screen. He got he booed by some of the Irish fans. He was on actually. He was on Rio Ferdinand's podcast today. I haven't watched it yet, but yeah, I said sitting... a few talking points from that comment. Mm. Yeah. I think he it said did he say cap. something? Do I don't know if someone can confirm. I think he said something. Do he uh, kept the job because he's a mortgage to pay, and his analyst has a mortgage to pay, so he didn't want his whole team to go. Yeah, well, he he's a duty, he had a duty of care, is what he said to his staff. Yeah, to his staff, family. yeah. But Robbie had a mortgage to pay, he said. Yeah, and his on about his analysts as well needed the money and stuff like that. So yeah, like look, I, I've been a big critic of Robbie Keane. I was setting the contract thing, and I know Ian, you know, it was defending. Ian's his mate, fair enough. You know, um, I like to think you lads would defend me. <clears throat> um, but I just I, had I, a flashback. Go on, go on, go on, go on. I'm having a flashback here, but go on. Go. Okay, but I suppose when you when you know it's it's very easy when you're on the outside looking in and you kind of go off oh, fuck it but like when you do kind of break it down you think look he's got bills to pay i'm i'm his meal ticket no i don't mean that to sound disrespectful but if you're an analyst for a coach the coach is your meal ticket you know the assistant manager the coach is your meal ticket you know and then so i i the, when you look at things like that i, I kind of do understand it a little bit more but anyway, sorry Martin, what were you going to say sorry, yeah I, I, i'm going to be having a lot of flashbacks about stuff obviously uh from the weekend because it was so much fun and late nights we had of course but um you need to tell ian me off hart, there. Ian, no i'm going to tell you on there it's funny ian hart was showing me that there's a leeds whatsapp with all the players and stuff in it like rio and robbie's obviously in it gary kelly gary kelly is mental basically yes. like wild but like, i know he's his uncle but some of the stuff I would have to tell you off air, but it was uh, yeah. some of the funny things he sends on St. Patrick's Day to the Leeds group was very, very good. Yes. Yeah. Great Actually, yeah. fun. Great fun. Uh, uh, mad characters. Anyway, um, Jimmy Shell again. Great job again. Uh, night, lads. Enjoy a few months off. Thank you, Jimmy. And thank you, everyone. The Roar Faithful. We're not done this week, by the way. That's the end of the window. Maybe a little bit of a bonus track on Friday. Um probably about we've got a show to come out dave yes yes we do we will release that the the we're just going to figure out how we're going to do it but we are going to release the audio that got it today the sound is lush um what's the guy's name what was the guy's name lee was it mm, yeah lee absolutely you, you've heard the audio lads like well i don't know if you, you have i have it's absolutely lush it's right from the soundboard it sounds amazing and we are going to release that but um before we go uh, we will be back on Friday. We're going to have yeah. a live reaction on Friday. Um, in midday or so. Midday. So that's so around midday. It all starts at 11. So probably around midday, uh, yeah. around that time, we're going to be, boom, straight on, live reaction. Get your, have your say, get involved. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as always, we are the voice of the fans. We're Lands and Roar, the most interactive Irish football podcast out there. So that's it. That's the end of the Boys in Green for 2024. It's been a weird year. We've gone to Portugal. We've gone to um, Finland. We've seen the Northern Lights. We've gone to Wembley. We've gone... Um, we had a few cracking times in Dublin as well. We had a great weekend as well. Also, we've had a couple of wins. We've had a lot of losses. And unfortunately, we've ended on a very bad note. Just want to say a big thank you to all of our Rod Faithful out there for joining us all the way. I mean, we've got just under 1,500 people watching us here. It's midnight. It's a school night. And there's some people probably up in the morning or probably hung over the bits and you're watching us. Fantastic. And you guys are great. And you really make it. I'm now speaking for all three of us. You really make it absolutely worthwhile. And thank you for your, your kind words and your support. And we're going to get even better next year. But we will be um back sorry i just had a comment there yeah went to athens which you secretly love dave <laughs> athens yeah do you know what? i actually forgot about athens i just fucking blanked it from my memory uh you didn't even go martin you hated that much um but anyway listen you guys are amazing thank you so much uh we will be back on friday we are gonna start doing the lives again we just need to have a chat and figure it out so don't worry because we love i miss this lads do you miss yeah. it i miss doing the lives yeah, the lives are the best they are. And we're going to start doing it again. We're going to get even more interactive and it's going to be brilliant. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Lads, thank you very much as well, Martin and Connor, for all your help during these windows and especially you, Martin. Fantastic weekend again. You should be very proud. And uh, <laughs> brilliant. No, honestly, brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant weekend. A fantastic. Delivered as a team. Absolutely delivered. Yep. And everyone showed up. It was a brilliant time. It was fantastic. Anyway, 
Uh, before we go, guys, please remember to subscribe to the page. Scan the QR code. Head over to the Facebook, Instagram, and our Twitter. Also, the YouTube. We are trying to grow. You can find us on TikTok as well, Rep Tracker and um, Lansdowne Road. We're trying to figure out what we can do with that, really. But, you know, you, we're just trying to grow the numbers, guys. And we really do appreciate your support. YouTube, if you haven't liked the video already, please do. And uh, if you want an opinion, head over to lansdowneroar.ie, lansdowneroar.ie, where you can also get an audio version of this podcast. And we do audio versions, by the way, of the podcast. And they're over on lansdowneroar.ie. Probably don't say that enough. Anyway, I'm David Dunn. He's Mark Prendergast. And that's Conor McAvoy, the grumpy little fucker down there. <laughs> 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 and this I know we love Connor and we love you and we love Martin of course and this is Lance Elmore good night God bless and you're flying home tomorrow safe journey we'll see you on Friday I'm still here, I'm still here.